Yes, you read the title right. Today, I'll be ranking every single Final Fantasy Freddy's character from worst to best. And when I say every single character, I mean every single one. Every game character, every book character, every AR skin, and even every movie and easter egg character, as well as some super unknown characters. But with over 1,000 characters, I knew this would be too much for one man to handle. So I reached out to every FNAF YouTuber I knew to ask for help, and they said yes. So as well as ranking every character, I will be having a bunch of YouTubers help me explain who the characters are, and trust me, you'll recognize a few faces. So sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the largest Final Fantasy Freddy's ranking, as well as the largest Final Fantasy Freddy's YouTuber collab you've ever seen. I hope you enjoy. Also, if at any point you enjoy this video, love you guys. Yendo is the most horrendous character ever. Well, not really. He's the endoskeleton of, I believe, Funtime Freddy, but I don't know. He probably has the worst jump scare in all Final Fantasy Freddy's, and he's not very pretty. Moving on. I am Groot. Woodland Toy Freddy is nothing too special. He's one of the many, many reskins of various FNAF characters flooding from FNAF AR. And since that game is now dead, I don't think we'll be seeing any more of him. Design wise, he's pretty cool. He honestly looks like something you'd find in Chipper and Son's Lumber Co, funnily enough. The wood texture is overall done quite nicely, and I like the staff. The eyes are also a really nice touch. Overall, not too crazy, but definitely memorable. Honestly, I may not have any YouTube videos, but this right here, honestly, you cannot get better than this. A quick message from Ringmaster Foxy. Ringmaster Foxy. Arrgh. 10 out of 10 for you. <sighs> Why do you exist? Liberty Chica is one of the many, many, many FNAF AR animatronic skins, and for some reason, with amazing skins like Flaming Springtrap, Magician Mangle, Clockwork Ballora, this thing gets the merch. <laughs> which is kind of funny. It was also the first reskin of Mr. Cupcake, which is cool, even though it's not on fire like the artwork shows. Overall, it's super random, but it's kind of funny. Melted Chocolate Bonnie is one of the many FNAF reskins that spawned from FNAF AR. He's just like Chocolate Bonnie, but probably spent too much time in someone's pocket. There's not really much to say here. A 7 out of 10 skin, I guess. Pretty forgettable. Chocolate Bonnie is another skin straight out of FNAF AR, and honestly, he's okay. I'm more curious as to who took a bite out of him than anything else I could be wondering about. All in all, 6 out of 10 skin, but nothing too special. <laughs> oh yeah, baby, it's Toasty Stern now. So, Blacklight Toy Chica is the one I chose because everything else was taken. This came out in 2018. Uh, Blacklight Toy Chica is a Blacklight variant of Toy Chica that was made by Funko. Yeah, Funko, the company that made this. <laughs> and this. Blacklight Toy Chica is actually pretty cool. It, it, looks, it looks fire, it's different from the rest, I mean... Yeah, it's pretty cool. Shamrock Freddy is a hilarious skin to me. This is one of the skins I see getting memed on for simply existing, and I'm all for it. It's basically a St. Patrick's Day version of Freddy, complete with a cool necklace, a unique hat, a green bow tie, green eyes, and shiny green skin. He's just Broccoli Freddy, or Hulk Freddy, or Shrek Freddy, and I love him for that. FNAF AR fucking died this year, ironically very close to St. Patrick's Day, so there's not really much to mention here. 7 out of 10 skin. Needs more green. High School Toy Chica, one of the many, many, many skins in FNAF AR. The other toys, aside from Mangle if you count them as a toy animatronic, are some of the weaker slash more forgettable character redesigns in my opinion, which I can't exactly fault Sculpt for, as this was only the second game in the series, but at the same time, this was the same game that we got the badass withered redesign of Bonnie, and the goofy yet lovable withered redesign of Freddy. So when I saw this high score skin for Toy Chica, I was hooked. In reality, it doesn't do a whole lot. It takes Toy Chica and makes her blue and translucent. 
that's not a whole lot of changes compared to some of the AR skins like, say, Flamethrower Endo, who wanted to cosplay as Pyro, or Clown Springtrap, where he became a thick Twitter user. Yeah, I feel like what this skin does with what it has is quite cool. The bluish-purple translucent color scheme works a lot better on Toy Chica in my opinion, and it makes her beakless appearance look less dumb, which I'm grateful for. On top of that, her bib now says high score on it, and with her beak removed it changes to game over. That is quite a nice touch. There's a reason I have her as my profile picture. The color scheme chosen for her sits really well for me, and as much as I despise FNAF 2 as a game, it's still quite nostalgic for me. Especially with those really old and bad mobile ports from back in the day. Regardless, High Score Toy Chica is a worthy redesign of the original. Solid B. Broiler Baby is an amazing looking skin that really gets me thinking. It's one of the many skins stemming from the now deceased FNAF AR, and it looks fucking fantastic! Very very cool! Could you imagine how the series would have went if we got Furnace Baby instead of Ice Cream Baby? Imagine if Elizabeth got fucking barbecued instead of scooped up into the killer ice cream machine. Would she have even been around children to begin with? I'd imagine a walking oven to be quite a safety hazard. This also makes me me wonder if this version of Baby could have survived the FNAF 6 ending. As for the actual skin itself, it looks absolutely killer. Normal Baby is intimidating already, but Broiler Baby genuinely would have been a scary antagonist to die to. Seeing as how the cracks in her face most likely would emit a lot of heat, this would not be a pleasant way to meet your demise. Either way, this is a 9 out of 10 skin in my opinion. Simple, but very thought provoking. Boulder Toy Bonnie is yet another reskin stemming from FNAF AR. And you know what? I actually think this skin is scarier than original Toy Bonnie. This skin is fucking cursed, to be honest with you. The lack of eyes and the overall petrified look of the character sent a shiver down my spine when I first saw it. Like, in a pizzeria, this thing would not fit in in the slightest. But imagine going for a walk through the forest and bumping into this. So like right here, you want to put like a spooky picture of Toy Bonnie, or like Boulder Toy Bonnie specifically? I'm sure you get it. Since AR is dead, I don't think bringing up gameplay is important, but this is definitely an 8 out of 10 skin. Oh yeah, goddamn. Ugh, I just had a nightmare that I was a communist. What the fuck are these lips hearts doing on my lawn? You goddamn communist. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, just popping in here. Uh, no one wanted to do the rest of the AR skins, so th this is us covering the rest of them. Bro, I'll tell you what, you fat little. And now it's the time that everyone's been waiting for. We have. <laughs> The Mimic is a character that was introduced in FNAF Security Breach, although he may have been with us for a way longer time than that. And he also made an appearance in FNAF Ruin. The Mimic is a character who is very important to the more modern and somewhat less understood part of the FNAF lore. As to what the Mimic actually is, he is a weird animatronic that we don't actually know the most about except that he can, well, mimic others. An example of this would be how at the end of Ruin, the voice that Cassie thought to be Gregory throughout the entire game turned out to actually just be the Mimic tricking her. You're not Gregory. What are you? Uh, I'm Gregory. Uh, uh, I'm Gregory. Get out of here! Run! Now, as I said earlier, we don't know the most about the Mimic as of right now, but there is a new game that was announced recently titled Secrets of the Mimic, which just based off the title and trailer seemed to be a game that will hopefully give us more information about the Mimic and his background. With all of that being said, the Mimic is quite the peculiar character and I can't wait to see what future games may have in store for him. Uh, the Mimic's an F tier because I, uh, yeah, I don't like him. So I've been tasked with introducing every single FNAF cupcake, every single one, from every single game. It's a very big spectrum with the value of each cupcake. So I'm going to start with the ones I think would be at the lower end of this list. And it would have to be the AR characters. 8-Bit Cupcake, Torch Cupcake, Scorching Cupcake, Calavera Cupcake, and Moldy Cupcake. All of these are from FNAF AR Special Delivery. I'd like to think they are at the bottom of the list because they are more reskins than actual characters. I don't think they provide as much value as most of the other cupcakes in this list. I feel like the same 
goes for the FNAF 4 Jacko Cupcake. It's more of a Halloween reskin than an actual animatronic. Now for the middle part, I would say like Toy Cupcake, Shadow Cupcake, Funtime Cupcake, Neon Cupcake and Giant Cupcake. They will all be in the middle. They don't provide much value to the story. However, they are standalone characters. Now on the higher end of the cupcake list, I would say it would have to be the original cupcake. I also think the golden cupcake would be up there because in FNAF 3, there are Easter eggs where you can see drawings, in fact, of the golden cupcake. So I'd like to think that provides some value to the lore. I also believe that the FNAF 4 cupcake should be higher up in this list as it is one of the few animatronics that can actually kill you in the game. That alone should make it high up in the list. Now, I know you've been looking at a lot of animatronics so far, many that you might not care about or many you have forgotten about, but that's why I'm here to bless your eyes with everyone's favorite animatronic, Balloon Boy, <laughs> and all of his unique variants. Balloon Boy is one of the many OG FNAF animatronics, appearing way back in FNAF 2, where he would eat your batteries and laugh at you as he does so. And while that's happening, you might see a little small silly little fella under your desk, and that's JJ. I wonder what her purpose is, eh, who cares. With those two out of the way, now we get to look at all the other very interesting and unique variants of the Balloon Boy animatronics, starting off with, um, uh, whatever this is. This variant is seen in FNAF World and is actually two characters glitched into one, with that being Mech Crab and Ball Boy. Who's Ball Boy, you might be asking? Well, Ball Boy is seen in FNAF World and is very similar to Balloon Boy, but with a few small differences in the character design. And staying on the theme of FNAF World, let's take a quick look at all the other adventure versions of Balloon Boy, starting with Adventure Balloon Boy, which is just, well, Balloon Boy, but just cuter. The same goes with Adventure JJ, Adventure Nighttime Balloon Boy, and Adventure Phantom Balloon Boy. Whoops, I forgot to talk about the normal versions of Phantom Balloon Boy and Nightmare Balloon Boy, so let's take a step back in the FNAF 3 real quick. Phantom Balloon Boy is a green, almost watermelon looking variant of Balloon Boy, and then Nightmare Balloon Boy is, well, a nightmare version of Balloon Boy seen in FNAF 4. Anyways, back to the FNAF World variants again. Brow Boy is a boss variant which can be seen in the Pinwheel Circus, and just look at that unibrow. Then there's DD, or what I like to call DD's Nuts, which is another character seen in FNAF World, and she is where you can play the fishing minigame. But then in Ultimate Custom Night, she just became a menace and gave every player PTSD just by this. And with all the FNAF World variants out of the way, we can again get back to the main games, and we're gonna go back to FNAF 2 again for a second here, and then work our way back up to the most recent installment in the franchise. Because there's still two more variants of Balloon Boy in FNAF 2, with both of them being an action figure variant. The one can be unlocked by doing the Night of Misfits Custom Night Challenge, and then there's the other one, which is Golden Balloon Boy, where he can be unlocked by beating 1020 mode 10 times in a row without dying. FNAF 3 also has a couple more variants as well, with those including Crying Balloon Boy, which can be seen in the Balloon Boy's Air Adventure minigame. And also in the same minigame, we can see Air Balloon Boy, which is who you play as in that minigame. Now, since I already covered FNAF 4 and FNAF World, let's move on to FNAF Pizzeria Simulator, where we actually see a surprise Balloon Boy during the Lemon Clown and Fruit Punch Clown minigames. Then there is FNAF Ultimate Custom Night, where we see a lot of those previous variants appear, but we also see XOR, which is basically DD, but a shadow version, and and just 10 times worse. After that, we move on to FNAF AR, which has some of the most unique and popular variants of Balloon Boy. Starting off with Augmented Balloon Boy, which is basically just a more updated version of the FNAF 2 version. Then there's also Frostbite Balloon Boy, which is a spooky snowman. Jetpack Balloon Boy, which is a steampunk version of him. And Swamp Balloon Boy, which is a mossy and overgrown version of the character. But then there's also a couple very obscure variants seen in FNAF Help 1, with those including Enhard Balloon Boy, which has purple eyes and Toy Freddy's head in place for the balloon. And then there's also Enhard Hard Nightmare Balloon Boy, which is the same as Nightmare Balloon Boy, but he is missing an eye, leg, and is more beaten up compared to his normal counterpart. But then after that, there hasn't been any new variants of the character, except for the cursed movie version of Balloon Boy, which is one of my favorite versions of him. And then there's also Mega Brow, which is seen in Security Breach, which everyone seems to forget about. So now you might be thinking, that's all of them, right? Well, no, because there's still a couple merch-related variants of the character, which I will speedrun through real quick. Blacklight Balloon Boy is just a recolored version of him, same goes with the second Blacklight variant of him. Then there's also a Cookie Balloon Boy who wears red and white clothes and has nothing to do with cookies. Then there's also a Festive Balloon Boy who is the exact same as the Cookie variant but wears red and green clothes instead. There's also a green glow-in-the-dark version which, well, glows in the dark. And then there is also Icebound Balloon Boy who is blue and looks like he is made out of ice. He also has black eyes. And that finishes all the Balloon Boy variants, I hope. Now next up we have Scrap Trap from Five Nights at Freddy's Pizza Simulator, aka I.
always come back. Now, Scrap Trap caught his little putrid self out of the wreckage from FNAF 3 to come and have a last dance with Henry Emily. He ended up getting the same treatment by getting absolutely cooked by Henry because Aftens always tend to have the worst luck. Moving on to mechanics, to a new player standpoint, dealing with Scrap Trap is like stealing cookies from the cookie monster. Every time you try to audio lure him away, he'll just get even more aggressive and kill you. Just like the other animatronics, he makes noises in the vents, so you'll have to stare into that vent for like 7 seconds to scare him off. I gave this dude an F tier, cause I hate him. Really bad. Next up, I have the three bullies that accompany Michael Afton as he kills his brother. Besides the fact that people think that the Bonnie Mouse bully is Cassie's dad, they really serve no purpose besides just to look like assholes. Freddy, basic. Bonnie, basic. Chica, fat. Foxy, basic but cool. Toy Bonnie, weird. Toy Chica. <coughs> Next. Toy Freddy, fat. Mangle, very cool. BB, fuck you. JJ, irrelevant. With a body, looks cool but mediocre. With a Chica, boring. With a Freddy, terrible. With a Foxy, useless. Shadow Freddy, awful. Puppet, alright. Golden Freddy, pretty good. Paper Pal, rubbish. Nightmare Freddy, very good. Nightmare Bonnie, very good. Nightmare Chica, good. Nightmare Foxy, good. Endo 1, fun to use. Endo 2, fun to use. Plush Trap, cute but also pretty ugly. Endo Plush, nobody likes you. Spring Trap, very, very good. Crying Child, gift boxes. Funtime Foxy, gift boxes. Nightmare Fredbear, very good. Nightmare, very good. Fredbear, very good. Spring Bonnie, very good. Jack of Bonnie, overpowered. Jack of Chica, overpowered. Adam Dude, overpowered. Chipper, pain to get. Nightmare BB, overpowered. Nightmare Ian, creepy and overpowered. Coffee Machine, best character in the game. Purple Guy, slasher. Auto Chipper, weak. Ball Boy, rip off. Bear Trap, cool. Black Trap, illegal. Bounce Pot, weak. Bouncer, really fucking cool. Box Bite, irrelevant. Brow Boy, boring. Bubba, cool. Chillax, no. Chipper's Revenge, difficult to beat. Chop and Roll, cool. Colossal, really weird. Crab Apple, a literal crab. Dogfight, not even a fucking dog. Isol, weird. Flan, gross. Gearat, weird. Glitched Enemy 3, glitchy. Gold Endo, cool. Gold Mine, Boondoggle, yes, that's actually a word. Graveweed, boring. Jangle, weird. Mad Endo, weirder. Mech Crab, very weak. Meringue, a literal cake. Metal Man, cool. Neon, looks funny. Overclock, basically just Mad Endo. P Goon, what? Pork Patch, weird but cool. Prototype, looks funny. Purple Geist. Quarry, boring. Red Bear, unoriginal. Rot, ew. Scott Cawthon, shit game developer. Scott's head, head of a shit game developer. Seagoon, cool. Seaweed, ill. Security, very cool. Snowcomb, basically just bouncer. Soldozer, cool. Supergoon, super version of Seagoon. Tangle, mediocre film. Tombstack, weird. Totemolo, weird. White Rabbit, Neo. Exclamation mark, 2222. Two, two, two. I, I don't know. Percentage sign, up arrow, up arrow, and left bracket. Cool. 8 bit Fredbear, cool. Anchovy, who are you? Big Jack, pretty big. Brow boy, why are there two brow boys? Cheesehead, sexy, Dee Dee, fuck you, desk man, important I guess. Half bake, another literal cake. Mad Jack, mad. Mendo, cool. Mini P, cute. Mud pie, ill. Old man consequences, chill. Party hat A, filler. Party hat B, no points of existing. Quad endo, is actually pretty sick, not gonna lie. Zangle, cool. And by the way, because these are all FNAF World characters, they're going to be basically at the bottom of this list. FNAF World Lolbit is honestly the GOAT of all of FNAF World. She hooks you up with all the supplies you need in order to beat the game. And she also hits a funky little jiggle. Very awesome, very sturdy, very good. Now, say my name. Lolbit. Guys, it's me, Phantom Freddy, and in today's video, we're gonna be playing one epic sexy. Holy shit, is that an epic scene? Fighting.
What's going on? You're back in Kibiti toyo ya por creeper. Ya ve pieram. Party Freddy is a black Freddy with glowing red outlines around his eyes and teeth. He appears in the Pizza Party minigame in Help Wanted 1. Very cool. Under construction is the weirdest story I have ever read. Or listened to, thanks Ozone. Jackson and Noel aren't very notable at all, and kind of just exist for a very short time at the start of the story. But Maya ends up going into this AR booth at the Pizzaplex that is currently under construction, putting on the headset and receiving the best birthday party she's ever had. As far as Maya as a character herself goes, she's pretty standard, but it's the events of the story that highlight her. It seems as if the entire world is coming to an end, but Maya is the only one to react. People getting cancer and dying at rapid speeds, faceless children turning to gelatinous blobs, and only Maya is taking notice. Definitely not a character that excels for her personality, but a good character nonetheless. Neon Chica is the blacklight version of Help Wanted Chica. Same as Neon Bonnie, very cool. Burnt Foxy is the Foxy that appears in hard mode parts and service and help wanted. Very cool. Here we have the dad and little boy who Mike bit the shit out of at the start of the movie. Great scene and very funny. Stick. Bucket. Yeah. Dark Freddy is the Freddy that appears in the hard mode of parts and service and he's pretty creepy. Very good. Dr. Treadwell is in like one scene where they talk about AI. Introduced in the fourth closet. Charlie, fake Charlie, circus baby, whatever her name is, is created to be the adult version of Charlie. This Charlie is the unfinished fourth and final iteration. She's made a pure agony from her creator slash father, Henry Emily, and inherited the soul of William Afton's daughter, Elizabeth. Because of this fusion, she contains the memories of both Charlie and Elizabeth. After being found and taken by William Afton, she now does all his dirty work to show that she could be someone her father is proud of. Although she is the adult form, because of Elizabeth, she acts very childish. She is ruled with obsession and jealousy, wanting to be everything Charlie is. Unlike the teenage Charlie, this fake is aware she isn't human. She's aware of all that her father had planned for her. In the end, when she's told by Henry that she isn't right, she's thrown aside and forgotten. Personally, I say she's on a higher tier than her true counterpart because of her powers of deception. When disguised as Charlie, the only person who knew it wasn't Charlie was John. Her best friend Jessica didn't even realize that an imposter had shown up and taken her place. Fake Charlie wants all of the friends that Charlie once had. And she's absolutely crazy for John. Charlie liked John, but not to the extent that Fake Charlie does. Plus, for some reason, seduction is one of her many talents. Other than seduction and stealing identities, Fake Charlie is also a master in the arts of kidnapping and murder. Overall, a great high tier character addition. Clay Burke is the chief of police and obviously useless since Fart to Freddy's gets to happen. Carlton Burke will always be known as the guy who William Afton trapped in a swing log suit. He exists. Betty Brooke is the district attorney for Utah and doesn't like Freddy since her kid died there. Dark Foxy is the Foxy that appears on Night 5 of Help Wanted 1. He looks really cool, and seeing a black and white foxy game with this guy would be really cool. Wow, I finally made it to the end of the guy slayer. That may took forever to traverse. I can finally fight the final boss of Map World. <laughs> Hi, I'm Duval, and that's right, we're talking about Chica's Magic Rainbow, the boss that played FNAF YouTuber since the release of FNAF World's Halloween update. <laughs> It not only was the hardest minigame to unlock Halloween characters, but also served as the game's final and hardest boss, being a team of the strongest characters in the game and still only having a slim chance to win the fight. Overall though, Chica's Magic Rainbow is an incredibly difficult boss, and canonically the strongest character in FNAF. Garrett Schmidt is the little brother of Mike who gets killed by William. He basically is the reason Mike has sleeping problems. And yeah, that's it. Jenny Emily is Henry's sister and adopts Charlie. I don't know. Maxine is the babysitter for Abby, and she also works for the auntie to get Abby in her custody. Maxine gets bitten in half by Freddy. 
Mr. Hugs might genuinely be the most overpowered animatronic in the whole FNAF series. Hear me out. Out of every animatronic in the FNAF series, Mr. Hug is the only one capable of making another animatronic rage so bad that they're going a killing spree. In UCN, Mr. Hugs annoys Toy Freddy so badly that he literally comes to murder you. And honestly, this makes Mr. Hugs seem like an incredibly powerful animatronic that should not be messed with. Neon Bonnie is a metallic looking version of Bonnie that appears in the blacklight versions of FNAF 1, Pizza Party, and Barton Service. Probably my favourite Help Wanted variant. Jeff is the guy who gets killed by Foxy after watching Bonnie kill Hank in the movie. Rest in peace. Kim is the girl of the training tape in the FNAF movie, and she's nothing special. Moving on. Next up, now this is one of the creepier ones on the list, and this is about a doll named Ella. Basically in the story, the main character finds this little doll named Ella at a garage sale. Now Ella looks like a little doll, and she is like a little robot thing, but she basically serves as being a little clock. And the main character, she instantly grabs it because first of all, she thinks it's really cute, and also, she basically sets up the doll to wake her up right before she has to go to work, but she puts some in wrong, and a doll always wakes her up at 1.35 a.m. Now she goes on to do like every single thing she does to turn off the clock, and I mean, she eventually gets rid of it, but she keeps getting woken up by these sounds at 1.35 a.m. She gets rid of the doll, like, instantly, but she just keeps get waking up by these noises, like, scratching on her closet, scratching at her door. She hears, like, tapping on her window. And eventually, one night, she gets in her car, and she just races out of town to try and get as far away from this noise as possible. She tries to, you know, just get out of town, and she keeps hearing it in her car, even. So she eventually finds this abandoned warehouse-looking place, and she finds this little vent in the warehouse. And, of course, she climbs into it, she gets stuck, and that's where the story ends. Funny story, a dead body was found in this vent once. Okay, so not that funny, but it's a story. Donald Brooks is one of the parents of the missing kids in the books. That's all we know. Carl is the guy who gets killed by Mr. Cupcake in the movie. Rest in peace. Moving on, we got Funtime Freddy. Now, I know Funtime Freddy's probably already been on the list, or at least he's going to be somewhere, but Funtime Freddy in the books is <laughs> a lot different than the ones in the games you're going to see. So this story revolves around a girl named Millie, and Millie is like all, she's super emo and obsessed with death and stuff like that. So she's at a Christmas party and she's trying to get away from her family, so she goes into the garage, and for whatever reason, her grandpa or whoever has this massive Funtime Freddy animatronic in his garage. So she's trying to get away from her family, you know. So she's trying to get away from her family, and she gets inside of the little chest cavity in the Funtime Freddy. And the eyes roll back, and he's like, all right, so, how you want to die? That's, that's like, cold open. Apparently, Millie always goes into the garage, and she's, like, venting and pacing back and forth. She's always talking about how much she loves death. And Funtime Freddy has overheard that, and he's like, Genie in a bottle! How do you want me to grant your wish, Millie? And he's very excited about all this. He's going over, like, all the ways he can body her. You know, he can, like, get the head off. He can electrocute her. He can boil her alive. I don't know how that works. At the end of the story, Millie realizes she's not getting out of it. She's like, all right, bet. I'll take, you know, get my head taken off of my body. I'm trying to not... I'm... This is the first collab I've ever done with JRK. I'm trying not to get his channel to mall with And she thinks like, okay, maybe when the saws come out, I can duck underneath one of them and I can break my way out. We don't see how it ends. We just, the end of the story is literally the saws come out and that's the end. This dude is so freaking creepy. I don't want to, I don't want to put him anything like, yo, if this was a tier list, he's got to go in S tier. I don't, I'm scared to see what else I would, I don't like. This dude is freaking creepy. Like, if this was a tier list, I can't, dude, I can't put him anything but S tier. He's gonna freaking come in my room with a, with a baseball bat and, and some chemicals. I don't know how he's gonna use them. Artie is Charlie's classmate in the Twisted Ones, and he sucks. Jane Schmidt is the bitch of the movie. She's a pain in the ass, and she gets what she deserves after Golden Freddy kills her. Alright, next up we have Funtime Chica. She is a part of the Funtime animatronics, but for some reason does not show up anywhere in sister location. She makes her first ever appearance in FNAF 6 as a viable animatronic to display in your pizzeria. She actually becomes a useful character in UCN by appearing on screen to distract the player. And let me say, she is quite the distraction. Lastly, she makes her most recent appearance in Help Wanted 2 where Carl the Cupcake is on your desk on the left side. Chica then makes her way around the pizzeria to retrieve her lost cupcake. When she is close, you must put Carl on the perspective side that Chica is not on. For example, if she's on your right door, you must place Carl on the left side of your desk or you will get jump scared. In all, Funtime Chica is a cool character, but she had so much more potential.
Grim Foxy is a bit of an oddity compared to the other fiery orange animatronics because at first glance, you'd expect him to have released alongside Jacko Chica and Jacko Bonnie in the Halloween edition of FNAF 4, but he actually first debuted in The Curse of Dreadbear, funnily enough. If you play the minigames in order, then the first time you'll see this guy will be either when you die and turn around to see him staring at you, or when you go to the corn maze. The threat is that Grim Foxy is really interesting interested in getting your autograph. If you're ever spotted by our big orange friend, then you can avoid him by hiding behind one of these photo stand-ins. He also makes another appearance during Danger Keep Out, an amazing set of mini games where he takes the role of OG Foxy and will repeatedly try to leave his cove and eat you. Design-wise, he's actually pretty lame. Like, I know I've been pretty generous to Jacko Bonnie and Jacko Chica, but Grim Foxy is literally just Nightmare Foxy with some serious heartburn. Nothing all too special about him other than the massive sickle, the eye patch, and the fact that he's a little bigger than the real deal. Bob is a security guard at the start of the movie he gets killed. Could have been Markiplier, but he's still pretty good. Hank is the guy he gets killed by Bonnie in the supply closet. Rest in peace. John from the FNAF book trilogy is the deuterologist, and also Charlie's love interest. Unfortunately, this relationship isn't that fleshed out and almost portrays John as kind of like a lost puppy, a little needy, if you will, towards Charlie, which kind of takes away from his character, especially since there's so much potential for more. For instance, John having trouble dating after the Silver Eyes when Charlie and him unofficially broke up, or him being a writer. All these things seem like very interesting plot points that just never really go anywhere. So overall, I'd say he's a mid-tier character. He's definitely neat, but I wouldn't say he's completely as fleshed out as he could be. Hello everyone, today I present to you Shadow Mangle. Whoops, <laughs> wrong one. Actually, they look a bit more like this. Have you ever seen this character before? Probably not. That's because they first debuted in Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, halfway through 2019. In that minigame where you're fixing the vents? No, not that one. I mean on the nightmare difficulty. This is where you're going to want to be careful, because if you don't keep your eyes peeled... That'll happen. That always confused me, how Mangle and Shadow Mangle are both teaming up against you. But I digress. Is there an explanation for a purple Mangle? No. Is it cool because I said so? Yes. Also, while I was doing my research, it turns out that Shadow Mangle was big enough of a hit to receive their own U2s, but also somehow not big enough to have any actual lore on the page either. The closest thing to lore we get is another name that they went by. Blacklight Mangle. But that doesn't really mean anything. And so, I think it's safe to say that Shadow Mangle will remain a mystery... forever. Anyways, I think Shadow Mangle is a fun, cheeky addition to the Fazbear family, because in Help Wanted, they're practically invisible in the already dark map. They're also quieter, which, I don't know about you, but if I got snuck up on while trying to fix vents without any audio cues, I'm doing one of two things. One, pooping my pants. Or two, why do I do this to myself? Overall, I hope we can get to see more of Shadow Mangle in the future. I'd hate to see a character like this go to waste, and I wonder how it would play into the current lore. Also, isn't it a little... cute? Oh. Anyhow, I'd say Shadow Mangle is pretty great, but nothing all that special. There are definitely some better options. Take it away. Shitty Fudge Chair. He's the torture machine from the movie. Although he is theorized to be a Springlock suit, he could also be a Fredbear suit, although we don't really know. Now as for the ranking, I think he does deserve to be like on that medium area, because he is one of the goriest things to come out of this franchise, and he's one of the only new animatronics to be in the movie. The only other one that comes to mind is Sparky, although he isn't really as important. He's also good enough to be in a figure they've made by U2s. So yeah, I'd keep him in that medium area. 
Speaking of body swapping, we got an underrated story about the Lonely Freddies. So basically, the main character in this story, he gets really annoyed with his little sister one day on her birthday, and he goes into one of the back rooms. So he's in his back rooms at one of the Fazbear's locations, and he sees this little, this little mini, you know, Freddy toy. And while he's in the back room, you know, hiding from his family, hiding from his sister, the Lonely Freddy starts asking him some questions. And they start off pretty normal, you know, it's like, oh, what's your favorite color? What do you want to do when you grow up? But then it starts getting a little bit more, you know, weird, like stuff like if you had to hurt somebody you love for whatever reason, would you? And all of a sudden, the main character, he's like, not able to move all of a sudden. And we can see in the story how the main character and the Lonely Freddy's eye colors start to swap. And y'all already guessed it. The main character starts possessing the Lonely Freddy toy. In short, the Lonely Freddy takes over the kid's body. The kid that turned into the Lonely Freddy gets puked on and thrown in a dumpster. And uh, that's, 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 that's the story. So fun, fun times. Mini minis are just mini belows and they just exist. That's about it. Endo 1 is barely his own character, but he appears in the backstage camera in Fanta Freddy's 1 and sometimes he looks at you. Obviously, this Endo is the base for all the Fanta Freddy's 1 animatronics, but who even cares about it? Pretty boring character. Next up is Endo 02 from FNAF 2. Now, other than being miles better than Endo 1, this guy is pretty irrelevant, being just an upgraded endoskeleton with two animal-like ears and a really pissed off face. When the puppet comes out of her box, he has a 1 in 10 chance of appearing in the prize corner, as well as having a 1 in 1000 chance of appearing in the left air vent. When in the left air vent, this guy can actually block animatronics from going in there, and since this guy is completely harmless, yeah, he's actually pretty useful. But considering he's just an easter egg that does practically nothing else for the franchise other than being in FNAF world, he's going to be near the bottom of this list. Nightmare Endo is a fucking weirdo, and I mean that in every way possible. As you can guess from the name, Nightmare Endo is the endoskeleton of the Nightmare animatronics. I don't know what else you expected. I actually had a hard time finding any actual proof that this thing existed in the first place. Seriously, the only thing I could find was this screenshot of Nightmare Endo in Ennard's Vent Repair from Help Wanted 1 in the ad-filled monstrosity known as Fandom. Other than that, he seemingly doesn't have any other other noteworthy appearances. Appearance wise, he's pretty cool, I love the beady red eyes and the sharp piranha teeth, not to mention the massive claws. I will say however, that these guys share a striking resemblance to the Glamrock Endos, although the Glamrocks have much bigger feet, broader shoulders, and a lot of other minor differences. Regardless of how similar they may or may not look, I think it's still worth bringing up. Pretty forgettable character, but at least it has a pretty cool design. The Freddles are pretty whatever, all things considered, and it's mostly because the goofball they're attached to is pretty nothing himself. I usually refer to these guys as knockoff Freddy plushies because they basically are. They're small, they resemble Freddy, they look like they'd give your kid nightmares if you bought them one, pun not intended, and probably smell weird. You see, these guys slowly appear on your bed, and if you let too many of them gather in one place, then their father comes back with the milk. That's the extent of their gimmick in almost all of their appearances. Even in UCN, they continue this pretty basic formula. The only time where they switch it up is in the Build a Mangle minigame from the Curse of Dreadbear. As you're building your multi limbed monstrosity, a Freddo will occasionally be seen sitting on the conveyor belt. And if you press this cute little button right here, you can shock it into submission. Design wise, I actually think they're pretty cool. They're tiny, gremlin versions of Freddy, and I do think that if these guys tried to overwhelm you, it either tickles or hurt like hell. Still wouldn't mind sitting one on my shelf though. Next on the list we got Plus Trap Chaser. Now this character is a lot different than Plus Trap in FNAF 4. In the story the main character goes in the, in the story, this main character is hearing about this new toy that's coming out called the Plush Trap Chaser. It's this little animatronic robot bunny that runs around in the dark when he turns the lights off. And unfortunately, he's super excited, but when he gets to them all, they're all sold out, except for one. But the only thing about this one is all the other ones look like, you know, a plastic little toy. But this one looks like it's got real human teeth and eyes and, like, hair. But apparently, this dude is very white. 
because it did not concern him whatsoever. So he grabs it and he and he buys it. He actually buys it and he takes it back home. It, it, it's got like bloody gums and that you know, he just he really likes putt putt. He likes putt putt and pickleball, I guess. So he buys it and he's hanging out with one of his friends, and it's a literally. It's a dark and stormy night, and the lights turn off, and then the plush shop chaser starts running around. So the plush shop's running around, the lights are off, they keep trying to use their flashlight, their phone dies, because it's, it's, a, it's a classic horror story. And it ends up with one of the main characters running out to the train tracks, and he thinks that maybe he can get him with the light of the train and just run him over. So he's running, he's running towards the train, and at the last second, he jumps up the train tracks, plush shop jumps on, stops in the light, and he runs him over. One of the only Fazbear Fright stories where the character doesn't get absolutely bodied and murked. So, I mean, W's for him. And overall, I'm, like I said, really cool character. No. Electric Bab is one of the characters we have to fight in the sister location custom night, and they are literally just Biddy Bab but electric. Kinda lame. Biddy Bab is an animatronic that's meant to represent a human child, because that's not disturbing at all. This little shit basically serves a minor threat in sister location, and kinda just exists. Mini Minis 2 are the most important characters in all of Five Nights of Freddy's. Did I scare you? Anyways, these guys just block your screen in the sister location custom night, and they suck. I don't know what else to say. Moving on. Next character we got up on the list is Fetch. Now in the story, Fetch is this little animatronic robot doll that this kid finds when he breaks into an abandoned Freddy Fazbear's pizza. Now this was supposed to be like an arcade prize you can win, and we see very early on how this works when the character syncs it up to his phone. And how Fetch works is basically his job is to retrieve or fetch whatever his owner asks for. And it starts out pretty innocent, you know, the main character texts his mom and asks him if she can get him a candy bar, she says like, oh we have food at home and stuff, and Fetch reads the text messages, goes to the store, and gets him a candy bar. And everything's going swimmingly, you know? And everything's going swimmingly, you know, everything is fine and dandy. Until he texts one of his friends that this girl he really likes. Talk about, oh yeah, I really want this girl. I really want this girl. And fetch! Let's just say we took it the wrong way. Overall, he's a really cool character. I like these types of like robot dogs and stuff, like Wally type stuff. So definitely my, one of my personal favorites. Molten Freddy is a character from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, and it's a pile of spaghetti. I, I mean, uh, it's, um, entered after it escapes Michael. Yeah. Personally, I think the design is good. It's cool how it's like Funtime Freddy's head, but all melted down. And I like the fact the body is just a pile of wires. However, I wish we were able to see him and really all the other Pizzeria Simulator characters move more. Like, we really only get to see them in the jump scare, but being able to see him move or something would be really cool. But yeah, overall, I really like Molten Freddy. Okay, Price King is actually an amazing character. His shining, beautiful gold complements the royal red very well. He's absolutely full of special surprises, which can actually come in useful during FNAF 6. He's definitely one of the most memorable FNAF characters, so I think he's really cool. Theodore the Plush Rabbit. There's not a lot to say about him, to be brutally honest. It was Henry's first toy for Charlie. It was the most simple toy that Henry made for Charlie, as he could wave his hand and say one voice line, recorded by Henry himself. He's repurposed in the Twisted Bonds for Charlie's robotics class. I'd probably yank him pretty low down. Fine Dude is the main guide in Final Fantasy Freddy's 3, as Fine Guy was in FNAF 1 and 2. However, this guy kind of just exists, and is just super excited about the Fazbear Fights attraction. Overall, he just exists in one game, and he's kind of just gone after night two of FNAF 3. Urgh, my ball fell off! The FNAF 1 office fan is honestly the go of FNAF 1. He's keeping our boy Michael after nice and cool, and honestly, all I have to say about the FNAF 1 fan is... Candy Cadet is one of the characters who have a mini game in Pizza Sim. They may have a story to tell you. They also appear in Ruin, which is pretty cool to see as well. Epic character. 
This one's a little bit lesser known, but it's still a really cool story. And this is the story about the tag along Freddies. And like the Lonely Freddy, its job is just to watch over your kid and alert you if anything's happening to them. Now, the main character in this story, he's like a single dad, so he doesn't always have time to watch over his kid. So he gets him the tag along Freddy. And one day when the kid is playing in the yard, you know, and he leaves him with the tag along Freddy, he gets a notification on his phone and it just says, gone, just gone. So immediately he runs outside and the kid is gone and the tag along Freddy is just sitting there. All right, now in this story, this is where it gets good. Now in the story where the main character lives, there are these cliffs that are really notorious for having people do a little barrel roll off of them when they're not feeling so hot. And all throughout the story, since the kid disappears, the tag along Freddy is just telling him, go to the cliffs, go to the cliffs, go to the cliffs, go to the cliffs, over and over and over again. And you know, obviously, main character's t taking it as like tag along Freddy saying him, yeah, you're cooked. Rap, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Wrap it up, buddy. Yeah, you're, you're done for. And obviously, main character's taking it as Tag Along Freddy's telling him, wrap it up, buddy. You're cooked. It's, yeah, you're done for. This is where your story ends. So finally, main character gives in. He goes to the cliffs. He's about to, you know, end it. And then he realizes, no, this isn't what my family would have wanted. This isn't what I'm about to do. And he hears his son is like underneath this little ledge of the cliffs. And he's hearing him sitting down there crying. He runs down, he picks up his son, he gets him, he's like, oh, there was like a little dog or, you know, I just ran out, I, I saw the dog and I had to go chase him and stuff like that. And, you know, he's got the tag along Freddy with him, it's all like beat up now. He runs down, he goes to his, he runs down, he goes to his kid and the kid's all like, oh, uh, you know, I was sorry, I saw like a little dog and I just chased after him and then I got lost. Tag along Freddy, dad's got him in his hand. He gets rid of it, he gets his kid back and they just, they go home, happily ever after. Also, one of the only ones with a happy ending. You read the Fast Bear Fright stories, Look up Fazgoo. See how that goes for you. See it. See how that goes. Mr. Can Do is honestly the most relatable animatronic in the whole series. And the reason for this is that he perfectly betrays exactly what happens when you become a FNAF YouTuber. Moving on to the suicide bot, it's quite important to the book lore. It's debatable whether it's canon to the game lore. He resembles an Endo 02 seen in FNAF 2. There's not too much to say about him, to be honest, but his importance to the book lore makes him worthy to be on that medium area. Next up we have the Fruit Punch and Lemonade Clowns from FNAF 6. They're purchasable animatronics in the daytime segment of the game, which includes a mini game. In their mini games, your goal is to scare every single suspiciously familiar child with the clown. For some reason, the Lemonade Clowns also speaks in Russian? Lemonade for Everyone. I would rank these guys within the top half of the tier list though, due to how goofy and adorable they are. Panstan, one of the Trash in the Gang members, but seemingly left out of the group, which is pretty messed up. If you play Ultimate Custom Night, he's not there. Then in Help Wanted 2, they've got some of the Trash in the Gang members. Once again, no Panstan. What's up with that? I love Panstan, honestly my favorite Trash in the Gang member. He better be high on this list. You... Who is this, Jerichai Games? You... Better get him up there. Luckily, he did return for Into the Pit. He's in the trash over there. Mega Cat Studios, I love you guys. You didn't forget my goat. Moral of the story, Mega Cat Studios, S tier. Scrap Baby is a character from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator that is Shirkus Baby from Sister Location, but after Ennard sped her out. Personally, I really like Scrap Baby. Design-wise, she is, in my opinion, one of the most unsettling designs in the franchise, with the blank glowing eyes and half-destroyed and torn-up face. And I'm glad we don't really get to see the claw or roller skates in the game because it definitely makes her less intimidating. So yeah, Scrap Baby is cool, and personally my favorite character from Pizzeria Simulator. Nom, nom, nom. Burn Trap appears in the base game of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach residing in the underground ruins of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place, appearing in the base game's Burn It All Down ending. Burn Trap has a physical appearance that resembles both Springtrap and Scraptrap, though with significant differences. His suit is olive and dark yellow in colour with an exposed human jawbone with teeth. His endoskeleton resembles a combination of the Glamrock animatronics and a Springlock endoskeleton. I have mixed feelings about Burn Trap since it seems like a lot of thought went into a story that never was. As shown with the trailer on the 25th of February 2021, Burn Trap is set up to be the final boss of the game as Gregory comes face to face with the puppet pulling the strings and the man behind the slaughter, I mean the entity behind the events of the evening. 
When it was found that Burn Trap is not canon or had no part to play in the future of the franchise, it was like a complete punch to the face after we completed so many side quests just for it to be a pile of nothing. This guy is canon though. Regardless of the stupid lore, on a base level, Burn Trap has a solid design and he had a huge glow up from FNAF 6 and UCN. He is a great character and better than whatever this was gonna be. The Paper Pals, better known as the best FNAF characters, appear in FNAF 2, FNAF 3, FNAF World, Pizza Sim, Ultimate Custom Night, Help Wanted, Security Reach, Freddy in Space 3, Help Wanted 2, and even make a brief appearance in Into the Pits, which is more than I can say for a lot of characters here. While it's never addressed like anywhere, the names of these three are Paper Freddy, Paper Bonnie, and Paper Buddy, so you better address them as such. Paper Buddy's quite a weird one due to the lack of any real resemblance to any characters we've really seen in like the entire series up to this point, but maybe that'll change someday. Uh, maybe. Well, you think there's not much to these little guys besides being stuck to a wall? <laughs> think again. Each paper-plated freak has been shown with some sort of sentience, or maybe someone just likes moving them around everywhere. Didn't help Paper Buddy though, he actually sadly died in the factory fire. However, his brothers lived on. Might have had their identity stolen, but they lived on. See, look, I'm looking at him right now. Why are there two Freddy? Well, they've never been greatly explained in any way, shape, or form, they seem to hold some sort of significance, as small as that might be. <sighs> only I could bring Paper Buddy back to life. Wait a minute. Oh my god. It worked. It actually worked. Mystic Hippo is a pretty interesting character. Seeing a fortune teller character in Final Fantasy is actually pretty cool. Very good. Nedbear is definitely the perfect example of we have Freddy Fazbear at home. Nedbear has definitely taken a few too many drugs in his lifetime, but honestly, he's definitely the cool uncle at the party, and he probably only beats a few homeless people every day. Next up we have Sammy, Charlie's twin brother in the Silver Eyes trilogy. He's hanging on Fredbear's live Charlie. He appears in Charlie's dreams in the Silver Eyes. Sammy could still be alive, although we don't really know that much about him. He does have some importance to the book, but not that much. He's a minor character. So yeah, I'd probably put him pretty low, as he has little significance. Sparky is an Easter egg character who ended up appearing in the Final Fantasy Freddy's movie. It's cool to see this character get some light. Time for Pig Patch. Pig Patch is very unique as he's the only pink animatronic. He's the only pig animatronic. He's the only animatronic with heterochromia. Does, does, does that count? Is that, am I right with that one? God, there's, there's not much special about this guy, is there? Pig Patch was first introduced into Five Nights at Freddy's Pizzeria Simulator. He never attacked you in the game, he was only an animatronic you could buy and put on stage. He's a pink pig with shorts and he plays the banjo. He was later seen in Ultimate Custom Night, like most Five Nights at Freddy's characters, where the vengeful spirit or some other creature talks through him. However, unlike most mediocre melodies, his story doesn't end here. He was actually featured in the Help Wanted 2 in the Helpy minigame as an antagonist who will try to attack you if you're not too careful while fixing Helpy. Other than that, there's not too much to say about him. He's kind of just a pig who plays a banjo. However, despite that, he still has a special place in my heart. I love you, Pig Patch. Anyways, that was Pig Patch, uh, moving on. Now we have Orvu Elephant from Pizza Sim, often overshadowed by that c Mr. Hippo. Orville has a pretty unique design being I think the only elephant animatronic in FNAF. He's one of the more expensive animatronics you can buy in Pizza Sim and has a couple cool voice lines in UCN. I don't get out much, so you'll have to forgive my enthusiasm. Wait, is he British? But jokes aside, he's a cool character I guess, just ultimately pretty forgettable and doesn't really do anything in the franchise. Jack Ochika is a lovely, lovely bird. It's just a shame that her entire existence in FNAF 4 is boiled down to being a festive reskin. Her much cooler appearance is in Danger Keep Out from The Curse of Dreadbear, a FNAF 1 recreation where doors don't exist, the power is somehow even worse, and every animatronic is a pro at hide and seek. Chica basically copies her FNAF 1 counterpart and attacks the right side of your office. Instead of slamming non-existent doors on her, you'll be flashing her like it's 
Casual Friday, a very fun set of mini games and one I highly recommend. She also shows up in UCN as one of the base 50 characters, a luxury that not even normal Nightmare Chica got, so I think even Scott has his favorites. If the office is 90 degrees or hotter, then Jacko Chica will slowly materialize at the left and right doors. All you have to do is slam both of them at the same time and that'll get her to politely piss off. If the office is above 100 degrees, then this does nothing and you're fucked. Design wise, she always gets a chuckle out of me. The flaming eyes look hella cool and I love the large amounts of orange present on her body. Not to mention the connection to heat and fire she has. However, her fucking pumpkin replacing her cupcake is one of the cutest things I've ever seen in this series. Unfortunately, her place in the lore is as existent as my father, so there's not really much to say there. Jack O'Bonny is the single best FNAF character, and here's why. You want to know why? Here's why. It's very, very simple. He is a version of the Nightmare animatronics, which are the coolest animatronics in the entire series, and that is not a biased statement. That is just genuinely, objectively true. And on top of that, he is a unique version of the coolest Nightmare animatronic, Nightmare Bonnie, and he is a special version of him that is orange and Halloween themed. Those are like literally the coolest things that you could possibly describe. I have goosebumps describing how awesome Jack O'Bonnie is right now. This dude glows in the hallway. He glows when he jump scares you and he's already got Nightmare Bonnie's jump scare, which is the single coolest jump scare in the entire series. Also not biased at all. And he just, he just makes it cooler. Also, you know, for any of you FNAF World players out there, he is one of the strongest FNAF World characters. So, you know, you gotta have Jack O'Bonnie on your team because he's crazy good. He's gonna save you for your speed runs. You always gotta rock the guy. He's, he's, he's honestly great. Oh, and also he is in the single best game mode in FNAF Help Wanted. So there's that too, you know? Single best game mode in the entire game. Jack O'Bonnie's awesome. God, man, he's so cool. God, he's awesome. Connie is basically a Rockstar Freddy in a carnival outfit. He also jump scares you if you score low enough in his minigame. Connie is a pretty cool character, though I'm curious to see if he gets added to other games. You know, I, I think we should give a little bit of context before this, you know, this happens. I was I was approached by, you know, Jerichai Games asking the question of like, who is your favorite uh, character, you know? And, you know, my, you know, I was thinking about it and you were like, oh, you know, you could do, you could talk about <laughs> your fan game, you know, you know, the game that you made, you know, the, the character that you made brother, you know, you, you want to talk about him? Is, is he your favorite character? And, you know, I, I kind of like had to look at him and I was like, you know, oh, no, nah. you know, someone who created a fan game himself and, you know, might have made a little bit of a self insert as they say, as they say. So probably even if it's a little bias, I think probably it has to be my favorite character is Yoda, uh, by far. Personally speaking, baby Yoda? Pfft, yeah, it's kind of mid. Personally, I think the real Yoda is the real deal. Mmm, you're so green and small. No, you're so goaded. That's what you are. You're flipping shits, you know, hitting like with Darth Sidious, man. Like, come on. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. That's what I feel about Yoda. Also, also, do, do we not understand that he trained Luke Skywalker? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker was literally one of the strongest Jedi Masters. You know, not as strong as his, you know, <laughs> as his father. You know, his father, I mean, Anakin. <laughs> Have you seen the Clone Wars? Oh my gosh, dude. He is just, you know, he gets mad. No, no, he's angry. Yeah, so I've just been informed uh, I can't submit Yoda because it's just not on the Google form. Uh, so... Can I put down a pregnant spring trap? Nightmare Balloon Boy is a lovely character, and quite the charmer when you get to know him. He's in the camp of, why the fuck does this character get so much attention when other characters like Ennard and Lefty are sitting right there? Regardless, this sentient trash compactor debuted in the Halloween edition of FNAF 4. He's Plush Trap's replacement in the mini game you play between nights. Despite being a really creepy and genuinely unsettling character to be around, he's nothing all too special. Slam his fat ass on the X and enjoy 
your four hour night. He makes another appearance in Help Wanted One within the Dark Room minigames. It's basically the same thing, but in VR. His most noteworthy appearance, though, is in UCN. He's genuinely a pain in the ass here, one of the easier animatronics to fuck up and die to. Every time you lower or raise your camera, you have to be wary of what position he's currently in. If he's sitting, then never let your flashlight touch him or you'll be deleted faster than you can say bingo. It's pretty fucking brutal, all things considered. If he's standing, then hit him with a quick flash and carry on with their night. If you lift the camera while he's stanced up, then prepare to be put down. Design-wise, I always thought this guy looked like a toilet, but I know that's probably just a me thing. Shattered Chica and Shattered Roxy are basically the same character, except one is, a uh, mute, and one's depressed. Now although Shattered Monty is nowhere near the level of Giga Monty, he is still pretty cool, as he is still Monty. However, he's disabled. You know what I love? Glamrock Chica. You know what I hate? Hearing Glamrock Chica repeat one of her four voice lines for the 950 second time right before I shoot her in the face. <laughs> Thankfully Ruin fixed this by uh, deleting her face. Ruin Chica is the most destroyed, revolting version of Chica that we've ever seen, and in my humble opinion, one of the best. Chica's always been strongly associated with beating above all else, but this is the first time it really gets played for horror, and I'd say it works. Seeing this utterly decimated robot shamble around scrounging for any morsel of food while having a garbage bag in her stomach and being covered in moldy cheese is actually kind of creepy, especially since the jump scare might imply that Cassie's on the menu. Like Monty, she's become a lot more animalistic since ending up on the wrong side of that trash compactor and seems to be driven solely by food at this point. She just comes off as this barely sentient zombie, and it's definitely a stark contrast to how she used to be. Not only is she the scariest character in Ruin in my eyes, she's also a surprisingly tragic one, especially when you realize the addiction motif probably isn't an accident. Glamrock Chica is honestly a pretty great deconstruction of Chica's character and the closest look we've gotten at her personality, but it wouldn't hit nearly as hard if we didn't get to see what she becomes. Ruin Chica isn't just a cool design, she's a way to explore one of the original four on a deeper level than we really have before, and for that, I kinda love this complete girl failure. Plus, I actually find her very relatable as someone who likes Security Breach because I too will eat up any garbage in front of me as long as it's the least bit aesthetically pleasing. Dreadbear, from the Curse of Dreadbear DLC released in 2019 for the Halloween season. He's one of my favorite characters from the game, with such a simple yet effective design to boot. He's based on the character of Fredbear, if it wasn't obvious enough, but with a Frankenstein twist on top of it, especially with his level in his debut game, titled Dreadbear. Yeah. That's the name. In this level, you have to program a brain for this animatronic and bring it to life, which thematically works with a comparison to Frankenstein as well. We also get to see him in multiple sizes, like how in the Dreadbear level, he's about as big as any traditional animatronic in the series, but in other instances, such as the game over area or even the title screen, his presence is massive as he towers over the player. I think this aspect provides an element to this character that would have made him very generic had he not had this. He would have just been seen as a cool Fredbear recolor, and nothing more had they not implemented this into the game, which I very much appreciate. There isn't too much lore behind this character, at least on a surface level, but it has been speculated that perhaps this character was an attempt by Cassidy, the kid that possesses Golden Freddy, to stop Glitchtrap's actions. However, we obviously know that it failed, especially with all the games afterward. Overall, a really great addition to the franchise, and I hope we get to see him again in a game in the new future. 
He technically is in Health Point too, but that's a cutout and not actually Dreadbear, as I had initially thought. But I think I've taken up more than enough time for now on Dreadbear. If you want a much more in-depth look at this character and the game he's in, I did post an interesting video on that some time back. So feel free to check it out some other time if you'd like to. Thanks. Oh boy, happy frog. Where do I even get started? As a frog myself, I do think she's quite the lovely one. Alright, jokes aside, she's a pretty mid-character. She has fun voice lines in UCN, she's a unique design being the only amphibian animatronic I believe, but overall she has no importance to the franchise apart from being a fun, obscure, secondary character. Mini Music Man takes the iconic and makes him baby. Very adorable, tries to buy off your ankles, and out of 10. The Twisted animatronics are the main threats from the Twisted Ones. They lure people in with sound discs and then kill them with spring locks. They're pretty horrifying and are all pretty much the same character, so I'll rank them on how cool they look. So we got Chica, then Bonnie, then Freddy, then Foxy, then the Twisted Wolf. Overall, very good. The Blob, or Tangle, is an extremely important character who we know barely anything about. This big beautiful bastard is found in the bowels of the pizza plex underneath the FNAF 6 restaurant within a giant sinkhole. And when you first cross paths with our big spaghetti friend, you're greeted by... Hey, uh, put the, put the Blob's jump scare here between bye and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I genuinely love this oversized mound of spaghetti. He's this weird, almost Lovecraftian abomination of wires, animatronic masks, and different parts. The Blob is also much more animalistic and almost feral as opposed to the other animatronics. The only other animatronics I could compare it to are Ruined Monty and probably Mangle, but I'll admit Mangle is a bit of a stretch. Not to mention how silent it is compared to the fuck ton of chatterboxes this game has. The Blob isn't much for chit-chat, unlike the Glamrocks. It's immediately hostile towards us and the only thing that can save us is hiding within Glamrock Freddy. After making your way past the Blob by crushing the floor with your immense obesity, he'll continue to be a threat during the Burn Trap boss fight as well. If you accidentally bump into one of these oily tentacles, then you'll be greeted by the not-so-loving eyes of our favorite pasta. Despite how much I love this character's sound design and appearance, it's only important because of the importance of previous characters. And even then, it's shaky due to the whole nature of how FNAF lore alters and straight up rewrites entire chunks of itself sometimes. We know, or at least we think we know, kinda hard to tell in this series sometimes, that the MCI remnant ended up in the fun times, which then go on to become Ennard. Ennard then kicks out Elizabeth because she's kinda lame and a bit of a bitch, and then goes on to become Molten Freddy, which the Blob is clearly an evolution of, let alone the fact that the Blob is found in the very last place that Molten Freddy was ever physically seen. Congrats, you now know the basics of the Molten MCI theory. If the theory is true, then the Blob is one of the most important characters in the story. But the Blob itself did nothing to achieve such a status other than simply existing and having a weird assortment of characters attached to it. If the theory isn't true, then the Blob is just a big fucking eyesore with no lore relevance whatsoever. It captures burn trap insecurity Breach's final cutscene, it makes a brief appearance in Ruin, and has a bunch of stolen parts from Rockstar Row. Hence why it has a fun time Freddy mask, despite that making absolutely no sense chronologically. The Blob is one of my favorite FNAF characters, but I'll admit he's a giant load of wasted potential and missed opportunities if nothing in the future is done with him. I wanna say he's a great character, but quite frankly, he's hardly a character at all. Next up, we have Bonbon bon from FNAF Sister Location. He's featured in Nights 2 and 3 of Sister Location, but his main game mechanic is to calm Funtime Freddy with his voice lines and prevent him from attacking you. He's a small little hand puppet, and I love how unique his design and mechanics are. I would rank him near the middle, though, due to his lack of lore relevance. Next, we have Mike Schmidt from the movie. All you need to know is that my man needs to learn how to stay awake. But overall, good big brother and great night guard. Vanessa from the movie is a police officer who's also the daughter of William Afton. Honestly, she's kind of just there to push plot points and she gets stabbed at the end, so I don't know what else to say.
Ruin Freddy is epic. He looks so scary, and honestly, this was the only scary character in Ruin. So for that, he gets the epic placement. Also, I love his jump scare. Rockstar Chica actually looks different than all the other Chicas. She has a very different head shape that makes her stand out, and I actually kinda like it. Other than that, she's not too exciting, but I do like the purple accents they used. I've always wanted one of these! Plus Trap is a beautifully simple character. You take a spring trap, you condense him into a marketable plushie that wants to eat your face, and BOOM! You got a plush trap. In between nights in FNAF 4, you have the opportunity to do the plush trap minigame. All you have to do is listen in the darkness and flash plush trap right before he's about to eat your face. Ideally, you want to do it when he's standing on top of the X. If you successfully stop him in the right spot, you'll have two entire hours removed from the upcoming nights, which actually feels pretty cool. I wish more FNAF games tried this honestly. Design wise, he's pretty cute. I mean, he's basically a super marketable version of Springtrap, so I guess he fits the bill, right? However, I will say he's a lot less scuffed up than Springtrap is. He has one more appearance in Help Wanted 1, where it's just a remake of this same minigame, but in VR. This guy is completely irrelevant lore-wise. Rockstar Bonnie kind of looks like a fan-made character. I like the blue they used, I think it suits him pretty well, but overall, all of his shaping looks a little bit odd. I'm also not a huge fan of the pink kneecaps or just the general design of the feet. Next, we have the missing children from Final Fantasy Freddy's. Gabriel, who possesses Freddy, Jeremy, who possesses Bonnie, Susie, who possesses Chica, Fritz is Foxy, and Cassidy is in Golden Freddy. There's also Charlie Emily, who is the puppet. These kids are basically part of what makes the series happen, and they are honestly the best part of the series personally. The book version of Elizabeth Afton is a lot more dark than the game, since she tries to be like Circus Baby so her dad will like her. And William also hits her. William's a dick. Moving on to Mr. Hippo. He's annoying, but in a funny way. Because when you get jump scared by him, he'll take up two minutes of your time to listen to him yamble on about some random story. He's a returning character in UCN Security Breach and Help Wanted 2 in the form of Mr. Hippo. Definitely a fan favorite, so I would put him decently high up. Next up, we have Elchip from FNAF 6. He's mainly featured in both FNAF 6 and Ultimate Custom Night, but is also in Security Breach and Help Wanted 2. The debut game FNAF 6 had him as one of the purchasable animatronics in the daytime segment. It costs a whopping 32,000 Faz dollars. In Ultimate Custom Night, he's a distraction as his pop-up ads for his own restaurant take over the screen. Finally, in Security Breach and Help Wanted 2, we see his restaurant dreams come true as it's featured in the Mega Pizza Plex. I love how unique this character is and I'd love to see him on the top half of this list. Abby is Mike's little sister, and she's pretty great. She's honestly the main character of the movie. She befriends all the animatronics, and even though they all try to kill her, she does help expose Afton, so she gets a bonus for that. Kids can be so cruel. Nightmare Mangle is very, very cool. She's this big ass version of our favorite abomination and replaces Nightmare Foxy in the Halloween edition of FNAF 4. I have already gone over how amazing this mechanic is with the Nightmare Foxy's entry in this video, so you've either already heard it or will hear it if you keep watching. And unlike the Jacko animatronics, he isn't just a reskin. Once she makes it into your closet, you'll be bombarded with the loud and honestly quite annoying police radio present in FNAF 2. FNAF 4, more than any other FNAF game, requires you to be able to hear certain sounds, with the exception of arguably FNAF 6 and UCN, so having a loud ass police radio present all night is not something I'd be too thrilled with. He makes another return in UCN where you'll need to grab enough tokens to snag your plushie or hardlock yourself in Cam 2 to stall them out. Design wise, I always thought Nightmare Mangle was wicked, even if it's a little basic, and lore-wise, she's not very important, but there are some striking similarities between Nightmare Mangle and the fourth closet Mangle, so there's something there. Alright, Glamrock Freddy's alright, there's nothing too exciting about him, he's pretty boring. I do like his whole coin slot mechanic in Ultimate Custom Night though. Hey, you know every reason you could possibly have to like an animatronic from a Five Nights at Freddy's game? Maybe the distinct design, the memorable voice lines, or even just them scaring the bejesus out of you that one time you got jump scared? Right, well, uh, I was thinking, what if we systematically got rid of every one of those traits to make an animatronic utterly devoid of any individuality, cloned it four billion times, set all of them loose in a giant maze, and spawned a coked up wolf directly on top of your nose if you get within nine zip codes of one? That's how I assume the staff bots must have been pitched at Steel Wolf.
Animatronics with no design, no personality, and a truly inexplicable hitbox approximately the size of Russia, these re uh, robots roam the pizza plex constantly and are the main threat of Security Breach, as well as the main thing ruining the game. Ha, <laughs> ruin. The idea of hiding from malfunctioning animatronics and a serial killer in a giant building hell-bent on killing you with no idea where they might be is pretty scary, but thanks to the staff bots, you never have to worry about that in this horror game because the animatronics will never actually hunt you down. They'll just disappear for the most part until you get grabbed by one of these things, and then they'll just magically spawn in behind you so their encounters are both entirely predictable and preventable. Hope you like getting yoinked from halfway across the map and dragged into the worst jump scare you've ever seen in your entire life before having to run from a threat that logically shouldn't even be able to enter that area, because that's exactly what's going to happen about a hundred times before the game's over. I would say these abominations deserve the worst spot on the list, but a few variants do have actual personalities and voice lines, and the alpha bots are pretty awesome looking. Plus, Mapbot exists, and he's my pookie, so I guess that's enough to save them from being bottom of the barrel. Glamrock Foxy actually has some pretty cool features. I really like the accordion thing he plays, it's super unique. His little parrot guy is also awesome, I wish they brought him back for Foxy. I like the idea of him just having one peg leg too. Overall, I think this is a really solid improvement from the normal Foxy design. Mexus, or The Entity, is a character from the Ruin DLC for Security Breach. It's an interesting addition to the franchise, perhaps even a one-of-kind character. The design is a unique one to say the least. When people first played through the game, everyone thought that this was yet another version of Glitchtrap. And yet, at the end, not only was its name revealed to be Mexus, but it also opposed the character Glitchtrap was supposedly assisting, so that logic doesn't exactly work. So, what is Mexus then? Well, it's a security system designed to capture and contain a certain animatronic under the Mega Pizza Box. The design consists of a black rabbit with electricity making up parts of its arm, with a black tail as well. In Ruin, this entity makes an appearance fairly regularly as Every time you have the Vanny mask on for too long, it shows up in order to prevent you from breaching the security. The entity is still a very mysterious inclusion though. Not much has really been explained about it as of yet. And it's only appeared in Ruin for now. Most theories indicate that it's a security system built or at least modified by Gregory and Vanessa to keep that certain animatronic trapped. And we know Gregory's been down there as his bag is literally lying on the floor beside a collapsed one. No one has been able to solve the abbreviation, however. Some say the S means security, but Gregory calls it the Mexus Security Program. So that rules out that possibility. Maybe the S stands for system instead, but the best I could come up with was mimic extraction and encapsulation system. But obviously that has its own issues. So. I'll leave it at that since this is a highly speculative thing. So, with that said, that's all on Nexus. Thanks. Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit, but the video game version, not the book version, because a books are for nerds. He says, for wearing a Star Wars shirt, might I add, Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit is the only game in the franchise that is actually Five Nights. There are no more, there are no less. It is the only Five Nights at Freddy's game. So there you go, here we go. Okay, let's let's make let's talk characters now. Let's do the let's do the character thing. Let's <clears throat> here we go. Oswald, the main man, the hero, on his journey to save his friends, his family, and 
himself. He is the character you play as. You don't get a choice. Like him or not, you're there. Stuck with him the whole game. He might have two left feet and a permanent panicked look on his face and absolutely zero common sense. I mean, zero common sense. He heard a woman talking about a ball pit that gave her a ringworm and went, I'd like to be right there, right now. In that ringworm infested ball pit, I want it all over me. But he has a heart of gold and that's what's important. Speaking of important, he is the most important character in this game. There is no other character more important than him. He's the guy. He's the man. Anything you want to call him, he is him. We don't have an Oswald last name, but I would imagine Oswald's last name is him. His middle name is also him. Oswald him him. Anyway, next. The main antagonist, or, to use a scientific term, the big bad guy. Cue the lightning strike for dramatic effect. The yellow rabbit. <laughs> this devilish creature, a horrid mix of flesh and machine, oozing with agony, all wrapped up in a lovable bunny costume. Although, being shown as two completely different characters, the yellow rabbit could be described as, as literally a carbon copy of William Afton. Is the yellow rabbit some confused memory fused with the the ball pit of William Afton, or is it two completely separate characters? We don't know. For the list's sake, but they're different. The Yellow Rabbit is the only character in the game that actually poses a threat at all. He's the only one. No, no one else actually does anything. So for that sake, importance is a thumbs up. He gets a thumbs up for importance and a thumbs down for being ugly. Next is Dad. Poor dad. Struggling to make ends meet after losing his job. Feeling like failure to his son who wants a life that he can't provide. And having to look after Oswald's grandmother who is otherwise incapable of doing so. Surely nothing else bad can happen to this man. Except being kidnapped and possessed by a giant slaughtering machine and held captive unconscious for a week while the fake dad rabbit hybrid goes home to his family every night. Poor dad. <laughs> You can't help but feel bad for him. There's no other emotion. But everything gets resolved and life goes on. Life goes on in- Never mind, sorry. Mother. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt this one time. On my first playthrough of the game, I thought she was completely stupid and oblivious. For someone who is a nurse, I believe, you have to be quite switched on and smart. So to not be able to see that your husband had been possessed by a giant robot ghost animatronic yellow rabbit thing, you gotta not be paying attention whatsoever. But... On further review, I don't think she could see him at all. And so to, in her eyes, it was just dad. I forgive her. I will move on. Which means she's just a mother trying to compensate for dad losing his job and just wants to spend time with her family. That's a normal thing. That's a normal person. I am only just realizing how sad this story is. <laughs> poor mum, poor dad, poor Oswald. Not poor yellow rabbit, ew. Jeffrey, the owner of Jeff's Pizza. An awful establishment, by the way. Riddled with diseases and rats and anything else you can name that's bad. Not to mention owning a ball pit filled with ringworm. In fact, the restaurant has so much bacteria in it that it could be considered alive and therefore its own character on this list. But we won't, it's not a character. I'm, all, I'm tempted, it's not though. And Jeff is a very lonely man, found 24-7 at his restaurant. He plays solitaire during his shift. He has awful personal hygiene. And it took the power of a 10-year-old to go around and fix all of his machines for Jeff to finally realize, hey, maybe this place is a bit of a dump. Despite all the negatives, I actually really like Jeff. <laughs> I don't care about the bad things. I look past them, I look through them. I love you, Jeff. Mike, a legend, a generous kid. Really, really good at pizza roller, but not as good as me. Let's go. Then there's Chip, Mike's best friend, who is literally just Mike. Except we don't hear about Chip's pizza rolling abilities, so I'm just gonna guess that he's really shit at it. Both are kidnapped by the yellow rabbit. Oswald risks his life to save theirs. And then when they do that, that's the last he sees of them. Ever. Th they just disappear. Like nothing happened at all. Ungrateful fu- Chica. Rather sidelined in this game and she has one role and one role only. And it's pretty insignificant. It's this. CHILD! Freddy, rather sidelined in this game, and he has one role and one role only. And it's quite insignificant. He just stands in doorways. That's it. His role is to be in the way. <laughs> Bonnie, rather sidelined in this game, and he has one role and one role only. And it's quite insignificant. He blocks hiding spots, which means if you don't hide, you never see him. At all. Foxy. Rather sidelined in this game. And he has one role and one role only. 
And it's quite insignificant. So insignificant, mind you, that he actually doesn't have a role and he's not in the game. Okay, now we're gonna speed things up a little bit. Here we go. Jet, the firecracker kid, performs illegal arson in the school playground and sells explosives at the library. It's kind of badass if you ask me. <laughs> Gabrielle, a nerdy girl whose grandfather used to work at Freddy's and between you and I, I think Oswald has a little crush on her. <laughs> Jinx, cat, cute cat, little cat. I love Jinx. He also seems to be the only thing that the yellow rabbit is afraid of. I'm allergic to cats, so I run away from them, but not because they're scary. Maybe the yellow rabbit is allergic to cats. Mrs. Meacham, she's a teacher. That's about it. Principal, she's a principal. That's about it. <laughs> the crying children that we rescue, and when we rescue, they seem completely unbothered and quite unappreciative that I just risked my life for them. The enraged customer, who was very rude towards Jeff for his service, he's trying his best. He is the only employee at Jeff's, and the pizza costs a dollar. What do you expect? Phone guy. He's just phone guy. As he has been the whole time. Ten years of phone guy. He's phone guy. <laughs> the family with the mother who's discussing the ringworm she got from the ball pit, which is a lovely conversation to have over dinner. Random school kids that are either nerds, bullies, or buy an absurd amount of balloons. Random pizza eaters. All of the other kids at Freddy's. The dead possum. Mischievous accomplice and underpaid teacher. And this bald man. And now for characters that are more Easter eggs rather than actual characters and provide more lore and deepy cool stuff rather than provide to the actual story. Golden Freddy Fetch. Andrew, Purple Guy, Gregory, Trash and the Gang, Fred Bear, William and Henry, Springtrap, Oswald's alter ego potential Foxy Guy, Stitch Wraith, Millie, Sarah, Eleanor, Funtime Freddy's arm, which Bon Bon is on, Zendrelix, Mecha Zendrelix, Balloon Boy, Mini Balloon Boy, Mini Renas, The Man in Room 1280, and the fan favourite, Hunkulies. I uh, help you, Lise. There is one last character on this list. And if you've been paying attention and you know your game and you know your story well, You'll know exactly who I'm about to say. An absolutely disgusting, repulsive stain on the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. The most pathetic excuse for a human being. Someone so evil and filled with spite that he makes William Afton look like a saint. I am, of course, talking about Dylan. When he's not hanging around the mill's garbage disposal unit, he's picking on the innocent and bullying the less fortunate to make himself feel better about his miserable, meaningless life. If you can't tell, I think Dylan's a punk bitch, and I hate him. I think he's the worst character in Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit. In fact, I think he's the worst character in Five Nights at Freddy's Full Stop. I, I can't believe that Scott Gawthon could come up with this. He's come up with an elaborate lore that is fantastic and horrifying and, and gruesome and awesome all at the same time. It's brilliant. And then he comes up with Dylan. Does it even have- It doesn't. The book doesn't have Dylan in it. Oh my god. Whoever got to do the Into the Pit book, I am envious of you, because you didn't have to talk about he who shall not be named. I hope I didn't miss anyone. God, there's a good chance I did. There's a lot of characters in this game. If I did, comment them. Let us know. Let me know. Flame me. Hey, Maynans, you idiot. What are you thinking? You left this character out. How could you possibly have done that? Now, Jerichai, this goes out to you directly. If I watch this video back and you have ranked Dylan above any other character, I mean any other character at all, I won't talk to you ever again. <laughs> and there you go. Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit m m movie. Movie? Video game. That's the one. Video game. I've played it. I haven't played a movie. I've watched a movie. I haven't played- I've played the video- it's a video game. FNAF Into the Pit video game. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the video. Bye. Now it's time to talk about our legend. Our hero. Our theorist that tricked us into believing he wasn't in the movie at all. We didn't suspect a thing. We saw the sign for Sparkies and looked up to see the one, the only, Ness, played by none other than Matthew Patricks. The perfect plot twist nobody expected. Everything about Ness is perfect. The actor, the name, the lines. I think at that moment in the movie, everyone watching lost their collective minds. But hey, that's just a theory. Vanessa is a security guard of the Pizzaplex, and despite having half the endings be about her, she only appears once or twice in the game as a threat, and otherwise she's just known for being the white woman jump scare gif.
Glamrock Chica, one of the four main animatronics in the Glamrock band. I believe she has the most screen time of a Glamrock animatronic. She is the only one which is in the original gang, except for Freddy Fazbear, but he is in the name, so you kinda can't leave him out. She has a pretty fun mini game in the Ruin DLC. Besides that, there's not a lot to say about her. Overall, she's probably my favourite Glamrock animatronic, so I put her pretty high up on the list, but not too high up. Next up, we have Gregory from Security Breach. Gregory, oh Gregory, where do I even start with you? He's the playable protagonist in Security Breach, where he goes around the pizza plex with our best boy Glamour Freddy and kills all of Glamour Freddy's friends in order to escape. Bit of a menace, if you ask me. He then makes his return in the Ruin DLC, where Cassie thinks she's trying to save him, but it's actually just the mimic tricking her. And then Gregory finally makes contact with Cassie, his friend, at the end of the game and kills her too? I personally think he deserves a high ranking just for the consistency of how much of a menace he is. Roxanne Wolf, better known as Roxy, is a character from Security Breach. Design-wise, I think she's cool. She's all perfect with her purple and red drip, and she got that one piece of green hair, but that's about all there is for her. I really like Roxanne's character development and her character as a whole, and I hope it gets expanded on in later games. Glamrock Bonnie was originally missing during all of Security Breach, but Ruin fixed that. Finding out that he was actually in the game and he was a secret easter egg was so exciting and cool. I think they did a really good job on his design. He fits with the other Glamrocks really well. He looks good on his own, too. I just wish we got to see a little bit more of him. I don't even know if it's actually possible to get the easter egg without cheating. Monty is one of the three main threats you deal with in Security Breach. Arguably being the most unique design of the Glamrocks, with an alligator persona, sporting six shades, sharp teeth, and a slick red mohawk. He is the strongest of the three characters, being immune to any of Security Breach's methods of stunning animatronics. However, despite all of that, Monty still falls into the trap of Security Breach's glitchiness, and if I'm being honest, he just isn't all that scary. I'm sorry, what do you mean? But what? Astral Spiff? What are you doing here? A little birdie told me that you don't think Monty's scary. I mean, yeah, Monty's just not scary. But have you heard of Giga Monty? What? In classic FNAF fashion, he's an animatronic gone wrong. A hunter with his safety filter removed, free to charge at you without inhibitors or remorse. It doesn't matter where you are, how good you are at hiding, he will find you. Arms out, full speed, ready to give you a relatively mid jump scare. If you haven't heard of Gigamonty, then you either don't use Reddit, haven't seen the content farms that used him, or haven't seen a certain no running video by yours truly that started it all. Wow, that that is scary. All right, Spiff, you've made your point. Monty is indeed the scariest character in Security Breach. I, I, is he gone? Is is he gone? Whew. Goddamn Canadians thinking they can tell me how to run my video. Fuck you! I hope your whole family has a nice Christmas! <laughs> how long have you been standing there? Alright, let's get it. Toy Chica is one of the main antagonists from FNAF 2. Her purpose is to be a backup singer and upgraded version of Chica from FNAF 1. Toy Chica first appears with her beak and cartoonish eyes, but later the beak is left behind revealing her unsettling teeth and her eyes are dark with a small white glow from her endoskeleton. Unlike OG Chica, Toy Chica's bib says let's party, as opposed to let's eat, which makes sense considering OG Chica is fat as fuck. Toy Chica makes appearances across quite a few other games, including FNAF 3 as a lifeless head and playable minigame character. FNAF Four as a toy figurine in the minigames. UCN as a selectable antagonist. FNAF Help Wanted in the FNAF 2 section. Oh. FNAF AR. FNAF Security Breach on posters. And she's supposedly in Help Wanted 2 as a cardboard cutout. Other than being hypersexualized by the FNAF community, Toy Chico doesn't really do or mean anything important. Although I do believe her beak in FNAF 4 was part of the lore in some way. Regardless, Toy Chica is still one of my favorite characters for, uh, reasons. Now, you may wonder why the Bones 5 YouTube channel on YouTube is doing Toy Freddy of all characters. In his origin game, Toy Freddy is pretty unremarkable. Sure, maybe in FNAF 2 he really isn't all that much, but man, when Scott saw that he was one of the lowest rated characters in the series, he took it to heart and buffed him to shit in UCN. 
Toy Freddy and Yucien is debatably the most luck-based character in the game, and that is especially true in No Death Coin runs when Toy Freddy is paired with Funtime Foxy. Once he's game over, which happens pretty quickly in normal 50-20 and NDC runs, he has a 1 in 10 chance to kill you on 0.5 second intervals, and wouldn't you know it, all of the showtimes that we have to watch fall on these intervals. This makes Toy Freddy a real pain to deal with overall. Oh. Ten. Oh, was that 10? Yep. Double ten. digits. <laughs> Especially for someone who's really unlucky. As for a ranking, he's got some charm, but overall, he is super annoying. Next up, we have Toy Bonnie from FNAF 2. Now, Toy Bonnie is probably one of the easiest characters to get rid of as you just need to pull up the mask and he's gone. Now, I'd say he actually has a very cool design with him being a more shiny and modern version of Bonnie. Now, the problem is that other than gameplay and design, he doesn't really have any lore to him. So, due to his cool design, all right jump scare, but overall lack of lore, this is why he's going to be near the middle of this list. Ladies and motherfucking gentlemen, it's your boy, Average Disciple. I'm saying it's your boy, like... <laughs> like, I don't have only, only a thousand subscribers. Today, I'm gonna be doing y'all a favor. I'm gonna be going over some of the Fazbear's Frights animatronics for the FNAF books, because I know... I know none of y'all read those motherfuckers. But it's giving y'all a rundown of the characters, what they're like, and what I think of them personally. Most notably, I'm gonna be starting off with Pit Bonnie. And while he looks like a typical, like, Spring Bonnie type variant, he's actually this weird, like, Keith tentacle monster thing that pulls kids into time-traveling ball pits and poses as their dads the f the books are weird it, it only gets weirder from here but yeah in the story the main character goes into a time traveling ball pit and winds up at a freddy fazbear location where he sees pit bonnie pit bonnie takes the main character back to his regular timeline and just walks around and poses as his dad until him and his dad team up and have this cool avengers level showdown and kill him overall i think the design is really cool i mean by the time this video is out we've probably already gotten into the pit game and overall i just think it's a really cool character Time for the most important upcoming characters in the FNAF franchise, Jackie. Jackie was revealed at PAX West on the way to the Secrets of the Mimic demo area. When you looked up, you would see Jackie looking down at you with a big smile and wide eyes, looking like she's about to murder you or something. I don't know. Jackie got problems. What is he? Look up. What is he? Look up. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I love how British Daco is in this clip, by the way. Jackie has a white painted face with red eyebrows, red lipstick, and blue eyeliner. Her eyelashes are painted on both sides, each having two red lashes and one blue lash. Jackie has large green eyes and a big red nose. Jackie also has a line down the middle of her face, similar to the sister location animatronics. Fun some Freddy the Goat, by the way. Um, it's been heavily speculated that Jackie is the mimic with a suit on, but it's unknown if she is or not. So please, please don't attack me. FNAF theorist community, I you know, I love you guys. Alright, please don't attack me. Please. I brought please. Jackie is a Jack of the Box animatronic, meaning she resides in a box similar to the puppet in FNAF 2. People who play the Sixth Mimic exclusive demo, which has tortured the FNAF community for weeks, no info besides word of mouth, please do will give us a trailer or something, please. But attendees said that Jackie detached herself from the box to start chasing the player. Not much is known about Jackie, but we'll find out when Sixth Mimic releases in 2025. Hashtag not sponsored. Moving on, we got my girl, Eleanor. Now in the story, the main character finds this broken up old animatronic in a junkyard named Eleanor. She takes her back to her room and every night, Eleanor promises to make the girl more beautiful. Hence the name of the story, To Be Beautiful. But there's only one requirement. She can only make her look prettier when she's sleeping and so long as she keeps this little necklace on. Y'all, y'all know how these stories go. Y'all already know what happened. You stupid. Nah, nah, what's nine plus 10? Until, obviously, one day, she slips, she falls, the necklace comes off, and uh, she just crumbles down into a bunch of robot metal heap in the middle of the lunchroom. Eleanor just steals her place and steals her body and just walks around as her. So, she's basically a, uh, a gaslighting junkyard animatronic who possesses the bodies of teenage girls. <laughs> Your food is burning. Nightmare Chica is a lovely character. I mean, she's responsible for this. But she's not that much different from Nightmare Bonnie. And by that, I mean they might as well be the same character. But that's nothing new. You check a door, and if you hear breathing, don't open it. But if you don't hear breathing, treat it like a Christmas present and peek into it anyway. Aside from actually having a pretty attractive voice. Sorry, I'm late to the party. I mean, <coughs> 
What? She's shown up in two other titles. She appears in UCN as a secret character Didi may or may not spawn in. You'll see this fat fox slowly closing her jaw on you like she's trying to reenact the bite of 83. Luckily for us, she's not the biggest bird and is scared away by a basic air conditioner. Oh man, if only Crying Child had a pocket fan. She also appears in the Curse of Dreadbear during the hallway minigame. You have to make it to the end of this stupidly long hallway without the nightmares getting the better of you. Design wise, she's actually pretty good. I always thought her different eyes and her massive toothy beak were stellar design choices. And she's pretty intimidating all things considered. Lore wise though, she's nothing special. Just like the rest of the nightmare, she's practically an afterthought. All right, time for 8-Bit Ryan's Nightmare. Music Man! Now, most of you probably know Music Man from his big counterpart, DJ Music Man, from Security Breach, or his smaller counterpart, Mini DJ Music Man, also from Security Breach. But no, we're talking about the menace himself, Normal Music Man. Music Man was first revealed in FNAF Pizza Sim in the Rare Finds auction tab, costing a whopping 19 thousand dollars unless you buy him while he's on sale who would want to own this creepy like weird smile looking at him I'm just, I'm just i'm just gonna say it music man has a very unnerving smile and honestly doesn't do that much in pizza sim he was just kind of an oddball character at the time until ultimate custom night where music man became a real threat music man is one of the 50 characters in ultimate custom night and he is triggered by sound if there's too much noise in the office he'll begin to crash his symbols if this continues he will begin to crash him faster until finally killing you going on uh five why is there so much noise? Why is there so much noise? You and I will be making music oh. together for a long, long time. Music Man is also the only animatronic to have a jump scare sound from a different game. That being FNAF 1, Music Man is one of the only characters to have background noise during his game over screen. Music Man is overall a pretty good character, but he ends up falling short compared to most of Pizza Sim or UCN cast. So yeah, that's about it for Music Man. See ya. You and I will be making music together for a long, long time! And last, but certainly not least, we got the story of the Stitch Wraith. Now these stories are actually broken up into multiple parts across like the endings of the Fazbear Fright stories. There'll be like little epilogues at the end of the stories. And basically the Stitch Wraith is supposed to be the book's parallel to the in-game Golden Freddy. You have two spirits possessing it, one of them controls the head and can see, other ones controlling the body. And just like Golden Freddy in the games, one of them is like a cute little timid kid and the other one is a very vengeful spirit. And basically the Stitch Ray stories just revolve around them going around the town, you know, a lot of people just pass it off as an urban legend. However, sometimes when the Stitch Ray will accidentally touch people, they'll just instantly like, just, there's like a zap and they just die, instantly. And neither of the souls that are possessing it are doing it intentionally. One thing we learned about the vengeful spirit inside the Stitch Wraith is that he kind of attached himself to the book's version of Afton, the person that killed him. It's a really cool way to kind of help better understand Golden Freddy, and overall, I think the stories and the character is really cool, so definitely a very personal favorite for me. And with that, that's going to be the end of my parts, so I'll pass it on to the next creator. I believe you forgot to lock your front door. Nightmare Freddy is my least favorite Freddy, period. Honestly, this guy is somehow more forgettable than Phantom Freddy, and that's mostly because Nightmare Freddy's entire existence is boiled down to a Flintstone gummy. And the funny thing is, is that this Freddy has the one advantage every other Freddy would love to have. He spawns in your room. OG Freddy wanted to be in your room so badly, he'd break the fucking rules of the game just to get in. Get yourself someone as clingy as Freddy was in FNAF 1. In 2024, we could all use a dash of that love. Instead of capitalizing on his golden opportunity, he instead wastes his time sliding knockoff Freddy plushies on your bed, which has potential to be threatening, but before you can even get a good look at them, they're gone. It's lame, it's boring, and quite honestly, this is a wasted opportunity to do something cooler. Design-wise, he's actually pretty cool. He's like this weird mix of super slow Slendy yet super bulky at the same time, and compared to the other Freddies, he definitely stands out. However, as with the other Nightmare animatronics, Didophobia all but destroyed any chance at lore relevance they would have had. He makes another appearance in UCN, but he's just as forgettable there as well. I think I've only died to this guy like twice in my entire life, and one of them was just to get this footage, so uh, go figure. His final appearance is in the hallway minigame from The Curse of 
Dreadbear, unless I'm forgetting something. You have to walk down this stupidly long hall without the nightmares getting a bite of you, and Nightmare Freddy will slowly chase behind you as you make your way down this hall. The noise the Freddles makes is pretty annoying, but the only way to counter him is to just keep moving. This fucker is literally unstoppable. It was an interesting mini game, but it only lasts for about three minutes. In my eyes, out of every Nightmare animatronic, Nightmare Freddy has the most wasted potential. VTuber Jump Scare Nightmare Bonnie is all in all a pretty cool character. He has one job and he does it very well. It's the same job he's been doing since FNAF 1, so it'd be pretty sad if he wasn't that good at it. Design wise, he's actually really cool. One thing I've always loved about the Nightmares is that you can very clearly see the FNAF 1 elements woven into them, but their designs are just twisted enough for them to stand on their own while also echoing their former selves. He makes another appearance in UCN where you have to either grab enough coins to purchase his plushie or lock yourself in camp 2 to stall him out. He also also makes one more appearance in the hallway minigame in The Curse of Dreadbear. His role is simply to open the same door repeatedly because he thinks you're a Jehovah Witness. Not very interesting, but still a very cool role. Unfortunately, his lore relevance isn't very interesting either thanks to a certain book I won't be mentioning. But all in all, he's still a very very cool character. Next up we have Mangle from FNAF 2. Now other than a terrifying design and a killer jump scare, this guy, or girl we don't really know, has some really interesting lore. After being placed in Kids Cove, the children were a bit rough of Mangle, often tearing him apart and the staff putting her back together as a take apart and put back together attraction. Although not shown canonically, we have seen Mangle's original form in merch and in FNAF World where they were known as Funtime Foxy, not the sister location one. Mango is also the prime suspect for the infamous Spite of 87! So due to her terrifying design, interesting lore, and cool jump scare, this is why Mango's on the higher side of this list. My turn, Nightmare Foxy is one of the most notoriously slept on characters in FNAF history. FNAF 4 is no stranger to trying new things. Having Freddy already in your room, Nightmare Fredbear as a surprise animatronic, and Nightmare as a surprise surprise animatronic are just a few of them. But Nightmare Foxy is single-handedly the best mechanic in this entire game. Nightmare Foxy will start his night very similarly to Nightmare Bonnie and Nightmare Chica. And until you mess up, Foxy will behave very similarly to Chica and Bonnie as well. You see him down the hall, and if you flash him, he'll go back into hiding. If you continue to successfully spot and flash Foxy, then you're rewarded with having a much easier night overall. If you fail to spot Foxy and let him into your room, then you're punished by having to dedicate extra time to Foxy while he's in the closet. Rather than being a supportive friend and telling Foxy it doesn't matter what colors his flags are, it's now your job to be the worst friend imaginable and keep him in the closet. Closet. This in turn adds yet another thing to do during your routine of keeping the animatronics at bay, and it's arguably the most time consuming one out of the four. Checking the right and left doors are only time consuming if an animatronic is right outside. Flashing Freddy shouldn't take longer than two seconds, but depending on how far Foxy has progressed in the closet, you'll be left sitting there for five, sometimes eight to ten seconds as you force him to become a plushie again. While annoying, this is a brilliant feature, and it helps to amplify the innate pressure that FNAF 4's ambience carries. You're sitting there at the closet, hoping that Foxy becomes a marketable plushie, all the while hoping that Chica and Bonnie aren't pulling up to your door, or Nightmare Freddy isn't in stage 3. And the fact that all of this can be negated if you do your best to keep him at bay is amazing, and seriously doesn't get enough love from the community. Design wise, he's nothing too special. Between the thick legs and the massive snout, he's just another Foxy. Although I will say that that tongue is questionable. The nightmares in general don't really have much lore relevance, especially after Didophobia dropped. So all in all, I'd have to say this is one of the few characters in the series who's far more interesting from a gameplay perspective than a lore perspective. Next, we have the missing children from Final to Freddy's. Gabriel, who possesses Freddy, Jeremy, who possesses Bonnie, Susie, who possesses Chica, Fritz is Foxy, and Cassidy is in Golden Freddy. There's also Charlie Emily, who is the puppet. These kids are basically part of what makes the series happen, and they are honestly the best part of the series personally. Next up, I decided to include Purple Guy on this list, who is the 8-bit version of William Afton, one of the founders of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and the Child Killer. 
This was everyone's first glimpse of the killer, even though for a while people thought this was Phone Guy. Purple Guy is super iconic, and as such, he gets to be where he is on the list. Number one crate is one of those animatronics that Scott Crawford made with perfection in mind. Number one crate came to Scott Crawford in a dream where he pictured the most perfectly designed animatronic to ever exist. Number one crate gets more bitches than you in five minutes than you'll ever see in your entire life. Number one crate, really good. Cool. Eclipse is one of my favourite characters of all time, and the best probably in Ruin. He's the only one that does want to kill you as well. The interesting part is that he's merged with two characters from Security Breach. Sun, who's a nice friendly guy, and Moon, who just really wants to murder you. Combining them makes good and evil, so the right balance, but I wonder what role Mr. Moon Man over here is going to have in the future. But for now, quite a cool character, Eclipse. Out of all the cupcakes, there is one that stands out, and that would have to be the FNAF movie cupcake. This cupcake is an absolute beast. He takes down one of the intruders at the start of the movie, and is actually one of the most aggravated animatronics in the movie. There is literally a scene where he's biting Michael's leg, trying to devour him. That alone makes him solo every single cupcake on this list. So Mr. Cupcake, aka Carl the Cupcake, has to be above all the other cupcakes in this list. There's no doubt about that. Let me tell you about this wonderful fella named Balltrap. If you don't know him, he's the charming yellow rabbit in the FNAF game Into the Pit. You may see him as a crazed murderer who is the main villain of his own game. But I think you all need to be a little bit more open-minded. So let's go down the list. <coughs> First of all, he's great with kids. Always making sure they're entertained at all times, whether it's playing hide and seek or setting up cool escape rooms for kids to figure out. Outside of the pizzeria, <coughs> he's a wonderful father to Oliver. Always making sure his kid is home safe and never gets into any danger. On top of that, he's a teacher, taking the time out of his day to volunteer at his son's school to make sure that they are getting the best education they ever could. Overall a top-notch dude and totally not a serial killer. That is ridiculous. In comparison to the rest of the FNAF cast, not many others can say they're as widely skilled and talented in and out of the pizzeria as Baltrap can, which puts him pretty high up there on the list. The movie animatronics were super awesome. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and especially Foxy on the big screen was amazing to see. Foxy was absolutely nailed and was scary as hell. Chica was a little overshadowed by the cupcake, but was still cool. Freddy was awesome, but it was a bit on the use, and to explain how awesome Bonnie is, I bring you to my friend, supposedly Booney. And now for arguably the best FNAF movie animatronic, not based at all whatsoever, Bonnie! I'm gonna try to keep this one a bit short because realistically, there isn't much to say about him. He's one of the animatronics that appear in the movie along with Freddy, Chica, and Foxy. There aren't too many differences among these animatronics as they're all just mostly quiet and don't have much individual character to them. But Bonnie, on the other hand, does have a bit of difference from the others, and it's him being a bit silly, as seen in the movie's Ford scene with Abby. Bonnie is also the one that ends up killing Hank in the movie, doing so in the pizzeria supply closet, which is very fitting for him, honestly. But yeah, with all that being said, FNAF movie Bonnie's a silly and murderous animatronic, very interesting mix of words, who is personally my favorite FNAF movie animatronic. Charlotte Emily, aka Charlie, is the protagonist of the Silver Eyes book trilogy. She's your average teenager who does average teenager stuff, such as attempting to solve the murder of her twin brother Sammy. Charlie has had an obsession with her father's work and animatronics altogether. She's noted that she prefers the costume characters at Freddy's when they move more robotically rather than when being puppeted by humans. Charlie has had a tendency to do some really crazy and reckless stuff. A few examples are grabbing a live wire so she could electrocute Chica, shoving her hands in a springlock suit, walking through a house that was falling apart, purposely putting herself in danger so that Afton's animatronics would come find her, Plus, many other moments too long to explain here. With all things she's done so far, it's a miracle she's even alive. It's almost like she isn't human. Wait. At the end of the third book, it's explained that Charlie isn't even human. She's a sentient ragdoll. She's not even possessed by a soul. She's just made of her father's grief from losing his daughter. Her brother wasn't killed. It was her. After the real Charlotte died, her father created four versions of Charlie so that she could grow up. A toddler, a child, a teenager, and an adult. Henry even built these fictional memories for her, making her believe she actually had a childhood. 
but in reality, all these memories were recorded from a tripod. Charlie is on a medium tier. She's a terrible friend and an even worse girlfriend. She put her friend's lives in danger multiple times, and she's overall forgotten or outright stood up on dates with her and John. You want a robot girlfriend? Don't choose Charlie. Henry Emily is Charlie's dad. The book version of Henry is a lot like his counterpart in the games, except he offs himself in the books. Which, speaking of which... Henry Emily is the creator of Freddy Fazbear's. Along with William Afton, he designed Fredbear while William designed Spring Bonnie. He's super important to the lore, as he basically created the franchise the series is based off. While we don't know a lot about him besides his daughter possessing the puppet, and the fact that he made Lefty and Pizza Simulator to burn everyone down, we do get an amazing moment with the connection terminated ending of Pizza Sim. Connection terminated. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Elizabeth. If you still even remember that name. But I'm afraid you've been misinformed. You are not here to receive a gift, nor have you been called here by the individual you assume, although you have indeed been called. You have all been called here, into a labyrinth of sounds and smells, misdirection and misfortune. A labyrinth with no exit, a maze with no prize. You don't even realize that you are trapped. Your lust for blood has driven you in endless circles, chasing the cries of children in some unseen chamber, always seeming so near yet somehow out of reach. But you will never find them. None of you will. This is where your story ends. And to you, my brave volunteer, who somehow found this job listing not intended for you. Although there was a way out planned for you, I have a feeling that's not what you want. I have a feeling that you are right where you want to be. I am remaining as well. I am nearby. This place will not be remembered, and the memory of everything that started this can finally begin to fade away, as the agony of every tragedy should. And to you monsters trapped in the corridors, be still, and give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe there is peace, and perhaps more, waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole, so don't keep the devil waiting, friend. My daughter, if you can hear me, I knew you would return as well. It's in your nature to protect the innocent. I'm sorry that on that day, the day you were shut out and left to die, no one was there to lift you up into their arms, the way you lifted others into yours. And then, what became of you? I should have known you wouldn't be content to disappear. Not my daughter. I couldn't save you then. So let me save you now. It's time to rest, for you, and for those you have carried in your arms. This ends, for all of us, in communication. What characters are available? Foxy, no. Wither Foxy, no. Phantom Foxy, no. Nightmare Foxy. Is there any? Uh, is there no Foxies? Is there no Foxy character left? Can I please get a Foxy character, bro? I'm not doing anybody else. Wait, hold on. What the fuck is that? Don't tell me I got a side character, bro. Please be fun time Foxy, at least, bro. Please, please. Nah. Well, I got a side character. But, um, Lil' Bit not being a main character, I mean, it has a real committed fan base. Unlike Balloon Boy, who is just the most unliked for no reason. You'll see this throwaway on the walls entering the sister location as a little secret. And also on the final night, they'll appear on the screen. And in order to take them away, you just type LOL. Same thing as UCN, whenever they start screaming loudly, just type LOL. That's it. Um, lame ass character. That is be fire, though. I don't know what y'all be doing, but that man is be fire. Like, god damn. Now to one of the biggest antagonists of the franchise, Glitch Trap. He's supposedly William Afton, even though I personally think he's the mimic. This cute little bunny was transferred into code to corrupt Vanessa when we're playing Help Wanted 1. I mean, he just stands there, um, menacingly. If it weren't for a good old glitchy here, then the whole Vanny scenario wouldn't have happened in Security Breach, and also Help Wanted 2. Now, even though he seems very intimidating and all that, which he is, but there's one slight problem. Bro just gets squashed in the latest game and all that theorizing is the mimic's code just for nothing? Well he's still a very interesting character as his whole purpose was character growth for Vanny and who knows what Vanny will do in the future games. Guess we'll just have to find out. Next up, we have Spring Bonnie from the FNAF movie. Spring Bonnie, or William Afton, is played by Matthew Lillard in the FNAF movie. He works undercover with the name Steve Ragland as a career guide for Mike before revealing his true identity as the man behind the slaughter. 
and Vanessa's dad for some reason. He portrayed William Apton beautifully and even gave us the iconic line, I always come back. Now I'm a bit biased here because I actually met Matthew Lillard at a convention, but I think he deserves first place on this tier list for delivering us the best role ever, William Afton. <laughs> Shadow Freddy is one of the two Shadow animatronics in Final Fantasy Freddy's 2, and over the test of time, Shadow Freddy has certainly lost his importance over the years. However, despite that, I much prefer him as a character to Shadow Bonnie, even though technically Shadow Bonnie has more of a role. The Shadow animatronics are some of the cooler ideas for characters in the series, and I really wish we got to see more of them. I would have loved them to be more than just easter eggs in their games, and them having to be threats in FNAF 2 or replace the Phantom animatronics, which they don't have the best reputation, so it would be super cool. But for what they are, they are fine, and Shadow Freddy is the least important, but personally is my favourite of the Shadow animatronics. There's theories as to who these guys are, from them being the employee souls who were spin locked in the old Fredbear suit, but no one really knows. Funtime Foxy. Personally, I really think the design of Funtime Foxy is one of the cooler ones in Sister Location, but I got a personal vendetta against this motherfucker after what he did to me in Help Wanted 2. So for that, Nah, I'm just kidding. But Funtime Foxy doesn't only just show up and help one and two in Sister Location. He's also one of the selectable characters in UCN. Another thing that I really like about Funtime Foxy is the voice lines that they give him. The voice actor Joe Goddett did a fantastic job at voicing him. I'm sorry, but there was never enough room on this stage for both of us. And just with everything combined about Funtime Foxy, I'd definitely say that he's one of the more loved characters in Sister Location, which would put his place in the ranking a little bit higher than the others. If you were to ask me what my favorite FNAF character was, I would probably say the Discolored Freddy who gets about 3 minutes of screen time before being burned to the ground. Lefty, or better known by his government name as Lure, Encapsulate, Fuse, Transport, and Extract, made his first appearance in Pizza Sim. He isn't featured in any promotional artwork, nor does it seem that anyone in-universe remembers Lefty at all, despite being a part of the Rockstar crew. I mean, we know he's a suit carrying the puppet around, but even still, with as much as we don't know about this guy, is what in my opinion makes him so interesting. I mean, most players' first impression of the guy is seeing him in the rare finds auction for a grand total of five dollars, sometimes even being marked down to a single dollar. Lefty is such a great character, he isn't at all affected by inflation. But for real, there's something so special about his design mixed with that perfect eeriness that a lot of the older games had with their characters. I just think that there's something so special about how his presence is handled in the series. It's like he was always there even if he wasn't. Truly the OG industry plant. I'm just glad that it feels like he was used to serve a narrative purpose and then only in that way. It's not like he's just being reincarnated every time Scott gets writer's block. Ballora. She's an absolute bad She first appears in Sister Location as kind of like a secondary antagonist. She also makes an appearance in UCN as one of the selectable characters, and finally makes an appearance in Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2, which I personally did not have a good time going against her. Wait, I'm so fast. Oh. What is that noise? <gasps> Overall, I think Ballora's design is kind of like an average design compared to the other sister location animatronics. I mean, she's got like the ballerina look. What else can I say? I also wouldn't say she's the scariest animatronic either. She even gives like a little warning call of like music before she comes in. You got plenty of time to close the door. But yeah, I'd say she's just kind of more one of the average animatronics, but she is unique compared to a lot of other animatronics in FNAF, so I'd say she's kind of more around the higher medium ranking. Hello, I'm Bonnie or Devonify, and I'm here to explain Funtime Freddy, a character voiced by the wonderful Kellen Goff. To get started, let's go back to when he was first introduced in Sister Location. Funtime Freddy was introduced in the break room on night two. And that's when you hear Funtime Freddy and Bonbon's bon voice for the very first time. Funtime Freddy has a very insane and deranged ass voice, while his sidekick Bonbon bon has a very calm voice used to calm Funtime Freddy down. In night three, Funtime Freddy has one of the best jump scares in all of Sister Location when you open his faceplates. Now that wasn't under his right eye, and though. press the button just above Freddy's nose. Oh, oh, Jesus, that scared me. Dang. Ah! Funtime Freddy plays a crucial and one of the most iconic roles in Sister Location Custom Night, having iconic voice lines like these. Well, hello again! <laughs> Are you ready for round two? Oh, birthday boy! Get ready for a surprise! Bon Bon, go get him! What did 
party pooper. Now, last but not least, Help Wanted 2. Funtime Freddy has one of the scariest levels in all of Help Wanted 2, and that's the breaker room. Funtime Freddy's presence plays a huge role in how stressful the game is by making you choose to either hold the megaphone that sends him back, or use two hands to push two levers to progress faster while he gets closer to you. And that's all for Funtime Freddy. Make sure to like and subscribe to Jerikai Games. See ya. What a party pooper. <laughs> DJ Music Man, the man, the myth, the legend. Being one of the largest Final of Freddy's characters, being nearly two stories tall, this monster is absolutely the GOAT of the Pizzaplex. Being an absolute legend and featuring one of the most awesome theme songs of all time. <laughs> Overall, DJ Music Man is the best version of Music Man, and he's an absolute legend. Ralph, better known as Phone Guy, is the first character we're really introduced to in Five Nights at Freddy's, and he adds a lot to the environment and world building of the series. Not only is he a fun character with a pretty distinct personality and mannerisms, but through his exposition across the first three games, we learn a lot about the events of the early timeline and Fazbear Entertainment. Though through the lens of a somewhat unreliable narrator who's being paid by the company and as such tries to not be too obvious about the questionable occurrences going on at Freddy's. In addition to his role in the first three games, he's also the main character of the interactive novel The week before. I haven't read it yet since it's not out yet, but as someone whose favorite character is Phone Guy, I am very excited to do so. All in all, a very fun character, and I'm happy to see him get new content. Look what we have here. Spring Bonnie and Spring Freddy. What? Spring Freddy, you are not on the team. You don't even exist. Mox. The Spring Bonnie is very important to the lore. He's special because he's a hybrid that can be used by anybody who has a death wish. This suit was made to be friends of Fredbear. Thank you. But William's furry addiction kicked in and he became obsessed with it. He was also jealous of his business partner because he makes better looking robot animals than me. You tripping, bro. This man was so used to this suit that he also used it to lure the victims in. <laughs> Dude really thought he was safe up until and he went back into the suit. Don't forget the suit is being called Spring Bonnie for a reason. Just make sure not to add any moisture. Oops. So that's all you need to know about Spring Bonnie. He's very important to the story, but I hate him because he's Bonnie. Trash. But here comes Fredbear. He's also very important to the lore. To progress with the story, instead of letting him cook, we need to let him eat. That's what I'm talking about. Bring him in now. Have mercy. I'm gonna eat it. Yo! Yo, holy shit, dead! And unfortunately, this means we have to sacrifice a low, but this sacrifice will not go in vain because we got. Was that the bite of 87? And this incident was the reason why the Fredbear Diner shut down. And in conclusion, I have beef with Fredbear, so I hate him too. Trash. So let's talk about our friend, psychic friend, Fredbear. So Fredbear is one of two spring suit animatronics. The other is Spring Bonnie, and they both come from the location in Five Nights at Freddy's called Fredbear's Family Diner. Now, Fredbear Family Diners was up in the 1980s. It, 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 it seemed like a pretty good business. Birthday parties happening every day and all that stuff. And unfortunately, it came to a crashing end because somebody, <clears throat> Michael Afton, put his brother inside of Fredbear's mouth while he was singing at his brother's birthday party. A big kiss on three, one, two. <laughs> and Fredbear just happened to clamp his jaws down on his brother's head, causing the infamous bite of 83. Was that the bite of 87? Confused with bite of 87 at the time. And that pretty much discontinued Fredbear's Family Diner and Fredbear and Spring Bonnie themselves. Yeah, as we thought. But actually, Fredbear and Spring Bonnie come back. Fredbear is seen around various Finance of Freddy's games as Golden Freddy just staring at Michael with those lifeless eyes. Darth Vader? All right, now we have Nightmare on. This guy is a thing of nightmares in each game he's appeared in. FNAF 4 speaks for itself, Help Wanted quite literally puts you in the same room as him, and oh boy, UCN, the scariest of them all because of his mechanic. It's so disruptive! Small bias aside with his museum mechanic, this guy has an amazing appearance and has my most memorable voice line. 
Personally, I'd call him an above average character. Now we have Withered Chica. Now Withered Chica is an antagonist in FNAF 2 with an absolutely horrifying design as I think she's the scariest character in FNAF 2. She also plays quite a crucial role in the lore of UCN dropping some really important lines like I was the first. I have seen everything. Her voice in Ultimate Customer is also extremely chilling and just adds to the creepiness of the character. However, she is a little... Yeah, she's too fat to fit through the vent in UCM, which does make her a bit goofy, but nonetheless, Wither Chica is a terrifying character, which is why she's on the higher side of this list. Wither Freddy's first appearance was in FNAF 2, along with the rest of the Withered cast. He was supposed to be repaired and upgraded, but due to a stench, he ended up being scrapped in favour of Toy Freddy, leading to his decrepit state, though he's in noticeably better shape than the other Withereds. While not special mechanically, acting similarly to Wither Bonnie and Chica, he is the literal icon of FNAF 2 and appears on the game over screen. He also serves as the protagonist in the Save Them minigame, giving him a bit more of a presence than the other Withereds. Since his debut, he's appeared twice in FNAF World and twice in Help Wanted. Phantom Freddy is a variation of Withered Freddy, though burnt and missing parts. There's also a small cameo of his unwithered self in a Pizzeria Simulator cutscene. Withered Freddy's dead-eyed stare and crusty design has no doubt left its mark on the franchise. Next up is Withered Foxy. If you've ever played FNAF 2, then you'll know it's almost impossible to forget this guy. During the average FNAF 2 playthrough, Foxy is going to be standing in your hall staring at you for about 50% of the gameplay. Withered Foxy is also heavily associated with the hallway ambience that plays during most of FNAF 2. This ambience has become quite the meme within the community and has even reached far outside of the FNAF community, even further cementing Withered Foxy as one of the most iconic characters in the series. Withered Bonnie. Man, where do I even begin? First off, his face looks like a fucking toilet. Now, Wither Bonnie isn't the most intense character in FNAF 2, but he sure is one of the most iconic faces in the game. Withered Bonnie, alongside Withered Chica, takes place in the vent shaft beside the player, with Withered Bonnie always attacking from the left, like in the first game. And as you exit your camera system back to the office, Bonnie will be standing there menacingly. <laughs> Alright bro, let me stop. He'll be standing there menacingly as you only have a certain amount of time to save yourself by using the mask. And he can even force you out of the camera, completely catching you off guard. Overall, Wither Bonnie is possibly my favorite slogging turn in FNAF 2 because of his twisted and menacing appearance. And, like, like, just look at him bro! And I think he's pretty swag, so he's definitely one of the more top tier characters. Did I scare you? Nightmare is an animatronic I personally despise. He does everything that Nightmare Fredbear does, but worse. Except for killing you, he's actually really good at that. Scott really took Nightmare Fredbear, made him black, and called it a day. Other than just being Fredbear dipped in oil, he also attacks just like Fredbear. Except he's much more aggressive. He'll show up in the halls, in the closet, and on the bed. His lore relevance is practically evaporated since the release of a certain book, <coughs> and his appearance is one of my least favorite in the series. It's not bad in the slightest. It's still pretty spooky, and the beady red eyes are very intimidating. It's just, man, he really is just a reskin, isn't he? He appears in UCN as one of the easier animatronics to take care of. Him and Nightmare Fredbear team up and will occasionally attack the left and right door. If you hear a <laughs> then close the door. All in all, I still don't like him, but I know he has his fans. Nightmare Fredbear, he's big, he's yellow, and he's definitely ready to bite your head off. Oh my god, he killed Kitty! You bastard! Was that the bite of A7? Not My Fredbear is one of, if not the scariest character in all of Final Freddy's, being one of the largest characters in the series and hunting you down in your own house. Not My Fredbear doesn't have as much lore relevance as his non nightmare counterparts, but he is still super cool, and nonetheless, he's probably the coolest nightmare out of all of them. Personally, I think he's fantastic, and he just works as a Final Freddy's character. Plus, him being the final boss of this game just works so well. And now it's time for Wither Golden Freddy from FNAF 2. Wither Golden Freddy is, in my opinion, the coolest Golden Freddy variant. Like, yeah, sure, the original is mysterious and cool and whatever, but he's literally just a retextured Freddy Fazbear. I think Wither Golden Freddy's design is way cooler and just fits that vibe that Golden Freddy gives off way more. Something else I also really like about Wither Goldie is how there's a chance that you can see him as a giant floating head in the FNAF 2 hallway. How many other characters do you know that can turn into giant floating heads, hmm?
Anyways, aside from Wither Goldie's cool designs, Golden Freddy in general has a lot of importance to the FNAF lore, especially since he's one of the strongest characters with not one but two souls inside him. But with all that being said, Wither Goldie's a sick character, plays a lot of importance to the lore, and is personally my favorite Golden Freddy variant. The crying child, commonly dubbed Eben, but recently has been proven to be called Dave, is the protagonist of the fourth FNAF game and our first character who we can say canonically dies. This kid gets tormented by his brother and is responsible for the most well-known FNAF meme of all time. To be honest, I don't know what else to say about him. He's A-OK. -okay. Michael Afton is probably one of the most important characters to the lore besides our boy William. Michael is the eldest son of the Afton family and he's quite a troublemaker, getting his brother killed and possibly being the reason that William got so hell-bent on killing kids. He plays a large role in sister location, getting scooped and worn by Enid, as well as being the player for Pizza Sim and suspect player for FNAF 1 and 3, as well as the end of 2. As far as we know, he dies at the end of Final Fantasy VI, but rumors spread saying he's possessing Glamrock Freddy, but for all we know, he's dead. Michael plays an important role in the story for Final Fantasy Freddy's, and although I think his character is a bit unrealistic and kind of dumb, I have to respect his importance. The FNAF 1 office fan is honestly the go of FNAF 1. He's keeping our boy Michael after nice and cool, and honestly, all I have to say about the FNAF 1 fan is... Vanny is the main antagonist of FNAF Security Breach, or at least she's meant to be. Anyone who has played the game knows she shows up like three times, and all she does is walk towards you and sometimes tea poses. Her design is a combination of Mr. Sock from Sesame Street and Judy Hopps from Zootopia. Not only that, but she has the best character mod in Security Breach modding scene. Of course, I'm referring to Thunder Thighs Vanny mod, in which Vanny switches out her skin skinny chicken legs for some baby making thighs. All the security breach purists know the only way to correctly get the security breach true ending is to be slain by Thunder Thighs Vanny. Aside from that, she's an okay character with okay lore, but I would have loved to see a lot more of her in security breach. Helpy is first introduced into Pizza Sim, and he's literally been in every single piece of FNAF media since. This little white bear, well, helps you. Except in UCM where you blast an air horn into your face. This little guy has been through it all, breaking his back, standing on your computer, and dealing with your poor financial choices. Helpy has just been seen as Helpy might be seen as a conscience or physical guide to the player, but in reality, he's just a cute little guy who does his part in making fines of Freddy's feel whole. Circus Baby is the embodiment of Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss. She is constantly gaslighting the player. Why didn't you believe me? Sometimes I don't understand why people do the things that they do. I thought you liked me. She is also gatekeeping information from you. She'll tell you just enough for you to trust her, but not enough that you'll realize what's going on and get the heck out of there. The scooper only hurts for a moment. We don't want to hurt anyone. And she's a girl boss, because obviously she is. Hello everyone, Flutus here, and today I'm here to talk about my favorite FNAF character. So in my opinion, my favorite FNAF character in the entire FNAF franchise has to be Ennard. I personally love Ennard for a lot of different reasons. My main one is that I always saw Ennard as like a side villain. Like William or Springtrap or just whatever the hell you want to call him at this point, was basically like the only quote unquote villain. I always saw Ennard as like another one and he had his own little secret room which I thought was like so sick to see. Now I know Ennard isn't really like his own character, but rather like a bunch of different characters merged into one. But honestly, that just makes him like him even way more. I like how much depth and story this one metal spaghetti man has. Even his reveal and appearance in his location was a complete surprise. Not to mention that he plays a very important part in the lore with climbing to Michael Afton instead of wearing him like a puppet. Like this was such a cool way to utilize him and I loved it honestly. Obviously, it's not just a story in his lore, but just his straight up appearance. I think he looks terrifying but in a good way obviously. Like just, it's just a bunch of parts. Just It's literally just like metal spaghetti. It's amazing. I just really like the absolute mess that he has going on for him. Honestly, it really suits him. Plus, the detail of the mask missing to this location that he uses for himself is such a nice detail. Man, just everything about him, that's why he's my favorite. So yeah, that's why I is my favorite. Thank you for having me. Bye. All right. Time for Glamrock Freddy. Where to start? Actually, it, it isn't that hard. Glamrock Freddy is the du Dutra... Dutra... Garnetonist? Deuteragonist. Glamrock Freddy is the... Deuteragonist. ...of Security Breach. A controversial game, to say the least. However, despite its flaws, the man, the myth, 
the legend himself shines through it all. Most of the time, that is. Freddy! Freddy, please. Oh my god, no. Not like this. Not like this. Please. Uh, give me in, give me in. Freddy! 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 A nice thing about Glamrock Freddy is although he might be a new face, he has a very familiar voice. He's voiced by Kellen Goff, who actually voice acts Funtime Freddy, daycare attendant, and probably lots of others, but I can't be bothered enough to do that much research. He's one of the only, if not the only, friendly animatronic in all of Five Nights at Freddy's. But he's also vital to the security breach story, and just all around a fan favorite. Despite all these things, he's not perfect, and neither is the game he's from, which is why he is an S tier, but he fits pretty snug where he is right now. Chica is the first female character in Final Freddy's, and she's a pretty cool character. Chica is one of the creepier designs of the original Final Freddy's crew, and her unhinged jaw, dead eyes, and let's eat bib really emphasize that. Chica is often seen as the least important of the core four, but I think she's quite underrated all things considered, and I personally think that she is the best version of Chica to come out of the franchise. Overall, she's pretty impactful to the series overall, and the franchise would not be the same without her, even if she's not the star of the show or the fan favorite. Foxy is one of the more hidden animatronics from the first Five Nights at Freddy's, hiding behind Pirate's Cove. The first time you'll see Foxy is when he's already active. Foxy progresses through four stages before you Usain bolting it towards your door at top speed. Foxy is also the only animatronic that can be seen moving on a camera from the original Five Nights at Freddy's games, which makes Foxy terrifying when you first encounter him. Foxy is also the only animatronic seen withered up in the first Five Nights at Freddy's. His design of a pirate with sharp teeth, bland stairs, and a pirate hook makes Foxy one of the most terrifying animatronics from the first game, and a massive fan favorite, which is why Foxy belongs in S tier. So, here we are, the start of an era, the man himself, Freddy Fazbear. The original Freddy from Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 was the first character ever shown to the public eye, and he left an impression to say the least. Not only did he start a franchise that has spanned over 10 years, he's also super iconic and just awesome. He has a great design of a stylish top hat and bow tie, and it's no wonder this bear helped shape the series to what it is today. This also is probably the only game where Freddy is the main threat or final boss of the game he appears in. The way he hides on the camera is creepy, and we all remember his iconic song when the power goes out. Overall, Freddy is easily up there as one of the best characters in all of Final Freddy's, and he's definitely one of the more important characters to the franchise. He may not be my favourite version of Freddy, but in terms of gameplay, this Freddy operates the way that I wish he would in every game. I wish Freddy would always be the most important character in these games, since that's what the game is called. But you can't always win, especially not with these next few characters. The first FNAF image I ever saw was probably the thumbnail of Markiplier's first Let's Play. And guess who was front and center? There's something magical about this image, something about the light reflecting off of his eye. If I ever wanted to show someone what FNAF is all about in one image, I'd either show them this frame or one of another character that wouldn't exist without Bonnie. To be fair, this version of him doesn't have much lore, but the movie gave him a lot of personality. His facial expressions give off so much sass, and in the original cut of the movie, he stabbed Uncle Hank with his guitar. Bonnie is the guy who's always getting overlooked, but when you stop to think about it, he's the backbone of the operation. And he can canonically fly. Scott himself said that the laws of physics don't apply to him. There's just something about his design that makes him stand out over Freddy. Compare this FNAF 3 prop to a very similar Freddy one and tell me which one has aura. That is why Bonnie the Bunny is the greatest character in media. Everything he touches turns into Skittles, 8 out of 10. And now we have one of the most important characters in the Five Nights at Freddy's storyline, the puppet. The puppet was introduced in FNAF 2 and also makes appearances in a couple other games, mostly through mini games that slowly teach you about the puppet and how it ended up possessed by Charlotte Emily. The puppet came with this new music box mechanic that made it so you had to be constantly winding it in order to not let it out or it would eventually jump scare you. It is very annoying. Or maybe I'm just bad, who knows. Unlike the rest of the toy animatronics, the puppet is the only one who didn't get scrapped after the FNAF 2 location. We know this because it is seen in the FNAF 1 location in the hallucinations that take place at the end of FNAF 2 Night 4. The puppet also later appears in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator as Lefty, who was an animatronic originally made to capture the puppet made by Henry Emily who knew that his daughter Charlotte possessed it. The puppet's soul was presumably set free after the FNAF 6 completion ending. Man, I really rambled on for a bit there, but with all of that being said, the puppet is a character that has a major role in the FNAF storyline, and that along with his creepy and unique design is what makes him one of my all-time favorite Five Nights at Freddy's characters.
Golden Freddy, one of the most mysterious characters in all of FNAF. This golden version of Freddy first appeared in FNAF 1 by either getting his rare appearance on a poster in the West Hall to summon him into the office, a 1 in 32,768 chance, or by setting the characters in Custom Night to 1987. Since then, he's been in almost every FNAF game as either an Easter egg, just his mask, his plushie, or even a full antagonist to fight against. And he continued to be a character shrouded in mystery throughout, teleporting from place to place, joining the other spirits wherever they go, and seemingly being the leader of the five missing children, both in the games and in the movie. Golden Freddy also seems to be an older version of Fredbear, one of the first two animatronics, who was later put into storage and eventually withered with age. Golden Freddy is an animatronic who you never want to see, or else you might as well give up. And here we have who I think everyone expected to be at the number one spot, the child killer himself, Springtrap. What's not to love about Springtrap? He's the husk of a child killer who got crushed like a pretzel and now roams the hall of Frasbear Frights coming for you specifically. There's multiple versions of Springtrap, so why is this version so high? Well, I think it's safe to say that this version has the most lore relevance, is the best designed version of Springtrap, and honestly, he just has a presence that extends beyond Fire to Freddy's, and his portrayal of what he is in-game is unbelievably awesome and terrifying. The idea that a serial killer was killed by his own creation and now lives on as a rotting corpse is just a terrifying concept. He ticks all the boxes for epic Fire to Freddy's character, and I honestly don't know what else to say, what hasn't already been said before. So, since it's the end of the video, I'll just leave you with this iconic Springtrap jump scare. I always come. So, there we have it. Every single Fire to Freddy's character ranked from worst to best. Now, I'm sure we definitely missed some characters, especially the book characters, but to be completely honest, literally no one knew who half the characters were, and we can't really talk about characters when there's barely any visual to go on top of that either. But anyways, that's the ranking. If you stayed this long, holy crap you're a champion. But I want to take this moment to thank all the YouTubers who were part of this project, so I'm going to list everyone here right now. Ashel Spiff, The Bones 5, who went way too hard on the code of the game, Gavin Gone, who convinced a bunch of these guys to join, Attic Partiers, I Am Reese, who has a land IO addiction and needs help, Respawn, ID's Fantasy, David Barron, who's running a charity event in December with Pastra, who also helped a ton, Hyperdroid, Ambience, Johnny the Night Guard, Lotto Dots, TOFG, Underscore, Supposedly Booney, who definitely fed his cat, uh, anyway, Evan Aguidano, sorry if I butchered your name there, Sir55, Snaspy, who did my personal favourite section of this video, That Guy Zan, SSJ Josiah, Vonnie, the absolute goat who deserves an extra shout out for helping me get in contact with half these people, Floop Loops, Debald, Mainins, who did every Into the Pit character, holy crap you're a champion, Blaze Fang, who also helped me edit a little bit, Toasty Beard, Wonder is Crazy, Ibadra, Alternatum, Sketch Arts, Taran, the creator of Real Time and a fellow Star Wars lover, Little, Mr. Wigglesworth, please tell me you didn't take laxative before you did your part, Reed, Frogger25 and Brayden, you guys are cracked at FNAF games, Average Disciple, who read the books for me, The Champion, True Player, Stumpify, Supers, Afton, Toast Away, It's Dingo, My Bessie for Life, Solus, Hollow, the creator of the epic hit fan game Observation at Freddy's and an active member in my Discord, which you should totally join. Pugos Pizzeria, who donated $50 to charity for this video. Spinlock Films, no, he's not a hobbit. Solia, who went way too hard on his sections but deserves all the praise in the world for it. Sicky Key Productions, who's coding our fan game, The Champion. Snorts, The Dre, Sleepy Box, Alfine, Sisviax, and last but not least, the TNT Muffin. There were some others who couldn't pull through, and not everyone's section actually made it in. But I am super thankful for everyone's help regardless. All their channels are in the description below, make sure to go check them out and support them. And of course, if you were crazy enough to stick around this long, then you better make sure you're subscribed. You guys are amazing, and I hope you enjoyed the largest Fire to Freddy's character ranking you have ever seen. Thank you all for the support on this channel. All my subscribers, all my channel members, and all my viewers who have helped me get to where I am today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.